Hello, it is Tuesday, November the 15th, 2016. Jason A. Stryker's waving. Hi, Chef how's it going? Gersman Jeez. is bespectacled. Hello. Hi. Damn, you look cool. It's the f- first day of everyone's rest of your lives here on the Giant Podcast. Yeah, finally That's, here. Yeah, what's going on? Uh, not much. What, do you, what? Hanging out. What? Why? What? Oh, I don't know. This is the, these are the color blindness classes. Oh. You need to see in color to be I on the podcast. Yeah, no, it's that's, they're, they're medicinal. What color is the table now? It's, color, it's like a red. Okay, yeah, yeah. they're color, working. Which red is the hard one? So what color was it before? It was still red. Oh, it's a very deep red. <laughs> but so those classes don't do much. Uh, you know the the light, the colored light behind Drew actually pokes out a lot more than it did before. The blue? Yeah. Okay. Like that's it's visible without it, but it's like it's it's more recognizable as like oh there is a blue light on that surface. Would anything guess, happen if Drew made the whole room red? Uh, no, I mean, you know, everything would just be red. It would be just, just be a super red, though? We can't. I guess, yeah. We okay. can't do this. There will oh. be people listening to an audio-only version they of the They know what show. red looks like. <laughs> they might not. <laughs> oh, that's true. But well, they put well, on they their glasses, they'll know. All right, everyone put on the glasses now. <laughs> they may yeah, never have man. served on a submarine before. How yeah. would they know? <laughs> oh, oh, dear. Yeah, oh, this looks like Jeff. You're still doing it. fucking chaos. I don't know. There's a green in there and like a white... You guys are prone to epileptic yeah, colors. Yeah. Please switch to the audio version. Right? I don't know. This this podcast studio is the Quake Two of podcast studios. Yeah, it's a three D FX logo on the door. A lot of colored lighting. Yeah, going on in here. What's happening? Not much. What's going on? Uh, you know, just uh, everything all what at is, once. What is occupying forever. your time? All oh, of, oc- everything. Op- op- Everything's occupying a lot of, my time. You want to like, dive into it? Yeah. Uh, I, well, I guess like I played some video games. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I guess we can talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> Proceed. Um, You've been playing Watch Dogs. I've been playing Watch Dogs 2. How about I throw out a prompt? Sure, yeah. I was trying to decide to start with Watch Dogs 2 or start with other stuff, but yes. Oh, I, have... I guess that's the big release of the week. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's, absolutely. That's the show, uh, you say? Yes. Uh, Watch Dogs 2 is a vid- sequel to Watch Dogs <laughs> uh, in a lot of ways. They have kind of... Uh, have a lot of the same kind of mechanics for outrunning, outrunning cop chases and mm-hmm. stuff like that. But it's hacking same, traffic lights. Yeah, hacking as traffic drive. lights as you drive. Is it and, more effective this time though? Or? It seems well. Th- yes and no. Okay. Did, did the original one have the simplified thing? Because you know I played a couple hours of Watch Dogs too. Yeah. And it's got that really quick like button, just like hey, this just makes the car swerve off the road. Or... So it it didn't have that sort of like the hacking was like a little a hot different. Key thing. But, the, but the simplified stuff in terms of like there's a cop behind you, it's going to flash a button prompt, meaning that cop is somewhere where if you hit that button right now, he will be taken out by a steam pipe. Okay. Like that was in the previous game. So you don't have to like specifically like get a reticle over the steam no. pipe and stuff. It's more you can do it that thing. way, but yeah. Right. Right. They they realized at some point that that was not going to be an effective thing. That game is weird. It, it's it they, it's an open world game. Like there's yeah. th- in terms of just mechanically and and the things you're doing, it's an open world game with side missions that are open world side missions. It's fucking go kart races and quadcopter <laughs> races and motocross Hijinx. races and yeah, okay. and all that sort of stuff. Like it's it's very <laughs> much that game. They've got collectibles in the world, but this time it is a uh, an Instagram esque uh, or a Foursquare esque type situation. Like selfies in front of landmarks. Yes, exactly. Yeah. You take yeah. selfies in front of landmarks. Yeah. Uh, in front of graffiti and stuff like that. So, uh, and <laughs> for doing so, you unlock more gestures <laughs> with which to take more selfies. Excellent. Uh, which it's yeah, it, it's cool. I'm a big fan it, of gestures. Yeah. Uh, big fan. It's awesome because the selfie cam lets you fucking capture the true bugs of that game <laughs> oh. with a smirking main character in front of it. <laughs> so it's like I last night I posted on Twitter, but I, I came across a car that was definitely inside of another car. Okay, and so I was like, "Well, got to capture this and pull out the camera." And he's just like next to it, just going, mm. it up. <laughs> you know, big smirk. Look at this fucking car inside this other car. And then I was able to be like, "Well, I'm gonna walk up." Okay, so. Here's the sequence of events. I was stopping my car to figure out how to get onto the roof of a building because the bulk of that game seemed, or or large parts of the game are about you getting up to the top of a building and it's not fun. But it doesn't have like climbing mechanics, right? No, it does not. This isn't Assassin's Creed. No, it is not. Uh, So it's about like, I need to walk around this block over and over again until I notice a ladder or some other way to get up. And like find a forklift you can activate. Yeah, uh, yeah. to pick up a thing and get up there. Like that, I think that's, it's not fun at all. And like like, once you get up there, do you like go through a window? First game has. No, no, these are buildings you can't get inside. These are just like, I need to get to the roof of this building because there's there's an item up there or I'm trying to like tag this billboard. Okay. Or something, you know? So it's like there are objectives like that. 
Um, or, hey, I need to get up there because that's where the vent is. And I need to d- deploy the little little, drone, little thing. drone thing to hop in there and pick up a collectible that's in the s- vents or something. You gotcha. know, it's, it's stuff like that. So I get out next to this building and realize I need to get up there and tag that billboard. So I just jump out, you know, part, stop the car in the middle of the lane, get out. Car behind me stops. The, it's this shitty SUV. This shitty lady gets out and starts talking shit to me. About like Shit. it's like you're just garbage like like basically like Whoa. it was like a really like Lady. it was a really like if that was a real transaction you'd be like man the shit is fucking wrong. bad out here <laughs> so I called a gang to come kill her good um which you can do uh, I've yet to kill anyone by my own hand <laughs> in Watch Dogs huh. unless you count all the people that have died because I've told gangs that they were traitors that's <clears throat> not your own hand uh. That's, that's it. Uh, you're, you're making a phone call there. Totally. That's not, you're, I'm you hacking. Pulling I don't yeah, know. That's, that's some, some real hacktivism you got going on it's there. A, <laughs> yeah, man. Like, honestly, like the, the line that this, the lines this game tries to draw about what is cool and what is not cool are just so fucked. Um, it, it, whatever. It's an open world game. So obviously they all have that to some extent, but it feels weirder here because yeah. of the writing. Anyway, so the gang shows up. They ice this woman. <laughs> She had it coming, as far as like, I'm concerned. They pull up with shotguns and stuff in a car, You upgrade right? that ability, so it's okay. like it, the level one gang is a little more pistol-focused, and by the <laughs> end, you're just like fucking these people up bad. Show enough um, comes out. But, like, you know, like I, it, it's a useful little skill because sometimes there's a gang that's holding a bit of territory, and there's an item in there that I need, mm-hmm. and it's like, well, I could skulk around and, and try to do this, or whatever. I'll just tag one of them, and then another gang will show up, and there'll be a gang fight, and then they'll all end up dead. Wouldn't it be non-lethal? Because you can call the cops in, right? And they'll just arrest I, I have an, I have not unlocked the cop ability. Oh, okay. But the cop ability starts at arrest and upgrades to... Like they're most wanted criminals. Oh, okay. And, like and one replaces the other, so it's not that like you once you once you go down that tree, it's lethal. Okay. So uh, we're getting serious. But it's le- the gang is lethal at step one. It's not you know that's just. And I think the cops might get lethal depending on who you call or who you call them on. Uh, a fun thing to do is you can call the cops on someone, and then when the cops show up, it's usually it's a few cops. Yeah. Call the cops on one of the cops and watch them turn on each other and just oh, keep yeah. following that chain down and they're just arresting each other. That's, that's great. That's really silly. But so so <laughs> having one gang show up and fight like security or fight another gang or whatever to, you know, kind of create some chaos for you to do your your dirt has been pretty effective for me. Because also then the cops show up too. So at some point you've got like three factions just like fucking each other up and you're just like, okay, well, I'm going to walk in here and do the thing I need to do and then leave. Yeah, and you're scot-free, right? Like you're not implicated no, in any as, of soon as stuff, No, right? as soon as you're in a restricted area, it seems like any one of those factions is going to look at you and go, hey, uh, depending on what you're doing, it, it's not it's not a clean well, thing. But as far as like calling in cops and gangs and stuff, by just calling them, if a huge gunfight breaks out, yeah. like no one's looking at you, right? If you're in a restricted area, well, you, yeah, are, yeah. you are co- uh, considered a combatant and they will eventually go, you, and then right. you'll get heat. But there's like an intersection, you're fine. Yes, totally, okay. you're fine. Uh, so anyway, that that woman was dead, and then I decided, well, the next thing to do is for me to just walk over there and be like, yo! <laughs> uh, next to this woman's dead body, as a paramedic is looking at it, just going... Uh, so, long story short, the selfie cam is a fucking fantastic thing in that game. I saw uh, uh, <clears throat> Austin posted a shot on Twitter of himself selfieing a guy who was himself selfieing, and you can see on his phone that it's just his home screen. <laughs> oh, nice. Nah, it's yeah. just like, bro, it's just your home screen. Like, uh, a lot of there, there's stuff. a trophy in that game for, like, getting photobombed while you're huh. doing that stuff. Nice. Anyway, whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, like, the, that game is taking the tropes of the modern internet and mm-hmm. uh, applying them thus, you know? Yes. Like, it, it's it's pretty <clears> effective. It has an Uber, you, but you're, you're like there are side missions in which you are an Uber driver. So mm. you just anytime in your car, you can say yes, let's do this, and it'll direct you to someone who needs a ride. Is it is it literally just Crazy Taxi at that point, or is there, is there like a satirical aspect to that? No, no is it, it literally it's just not pick even, somebody up and drop them off. Literally, just pick someone up and drop them off, and and they'll you'll have a conversation with them. I've only done it once because hmm. it just seemed like this. I don't. Why would you do this? Uh, you don't need the money. It's not. Time to yeah, get like, some crazy background checks. Right, yeah. But you do have like a conversation. Like the one I did was like, the guy was having a conversation with me about how the service is kind of fucked <laughs> uh, against like taxi drivers. Or just like, oh, you're just out there to make a buck, huh? And you're just like, yeah, yeah, wow. I guess. Yeah. Like it's, it's, it, that one was weird. Mm-hmm. And then he then he had me drop him off in a restricted area. So gangs chased me away. Okay. So I don't know. Maybe Maybe some of them lead to more stuff like that. But... Uh, I don't know, like using the abilities as you upgrade them and stuff like that. Like it, it's a fun little kind of clockwork thing, you know. <clears throat> like the AI is really stupid, 
yeah. um, and and using them against each other in in fun ways leads to ridiculous open world moments that I thought were were pretty fun. You finished the first one, right? Yeah, I did. Is this one like it doesn't sound substantively that different from? Uh, so, like, are there a lot of new abilities? Is there really that much different mechanically? I mean, going on? so it, it, this, you know, you've got your. There's still like that notion of like, okay, I'm, I need to have a line of sight on a thing to hack it. So there's our sp specific points where you're like, okay, I need to go into this camera's view. And then I can, that puts me close enough to this other camera so I can transmit my view to that camera. And looking out of that camera, I can hack this laptop, which gives me a key to open this door so I can walk inside. Right. Which is uh, right out of the first game. Uh, yeah, mostly. More or less. Mostly, yeah. yeah. So, um, but this is then, then like, okay, well, now I have a quadcopter so I can fly that around and tag enemies. I can hack laptops. Mm. I can get doors. But also, frequently, you'll have things that require a physical hack. So you need to either be there in person or your, your little drone, your little, like, like racer. Uh, ground-based thing can uh, do those physical hacks. It'll have an arm that'll go up and plug into stuff. And uh, so you, if you can get that thing in there, that's in a lot of cases as effective yeah. as you being there yourself. So kind of the first game with some new doohickeys. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but then like, you know, it's, it, they've layered on what we think of as the current internet a so lot the, more. That's where I was going with this. It seems like the big differentiator here is like the tone, the, and the, tone, the tone and the and writing. writing. Like it is a lot less serious about itself. Yeah. And I for, think that aspect for good of and it, Ill. yeah, I, I think that aspect of it, like the writing is probably the strongest part of that game mm. oh, good. Uh, so far in terms of just like, like you've got your, your four or five, it's, it's like five people that you're are kind of like the, are the tight dead set crew, your mm. guy and a handful of other people. And they're written super broad, you know, it's just like, all right, here's the guy who, you know, like is the kind of socially awkward hacker dude who doesn't understand social cues all that well and all that other stuff and he's gonna be like this then you've got weird fucking like metal slash punk hacker guy and he's the dipshit with the fucking <laughs> emotes on his face yeah. and stuff and that, was, guy, oh, that guy his name is wrench was there a person mm. in the first game that had that also uh, like there's, there's the little emoticon-y eye there's a dead mouse screen kind of yeah there's a dead mouse esque okay. dj in the okay. first game that has something similar uh, and that guy more or less sucks, but whatever. Like, you know, like the, the game is written as like, okay, well, here's your crew. And like, you know, sometimes they're kind of lame if you're looking at it like that. But yeah. in, in context of how these characters interact, I think it's all pretty good. Hmm. Uh, how about the grander story uh, outside of just the characters? Like, is there a, you know, main antagonist? Is, is the overall yeah, story good? Yeah, the, there is a main antagonist. Uh, absolutely. Well, so it, it's definitely set up a, a bad guy. And I've, I've, I'm like probably about halfway through the game. I, I can't actually tell. Mm -hmm. But in terms of how the story flow has gone, like I've had a major setback and then recovered from it. And now we know who our true enemy is. Uh, I, don't, I, I would imagine it would, I would hope it would twist and turn a little bit more than that. Because uh, I think a lot of the side missions and stuff like that are a little, a little boring in spots or, or a little too cutesy and for its own good. A little too ripped from the headlines. So the stuff cases. like the Martin Shkreli stuff. Yeah, and... that's that's literally like the first mission I encountered. Oh wow, uh, that's a side thing. Right? Yeah, it's okay. a side thing, but it's you know, but it's super easy to do. Um, so yeah, that sort of stuff. It, that mission in particular, I think, like, is a little too cute for mm. its own good. Like the payoff is decent because uh, it's you making a soundboard of this rapper and convincing this guy that. <laughs> that he needs to pay $20 million to lock up exclusive traps from this rapper whose name huh. is Bobo Dakes, <laughs> nice. which is a great fucking <laughs> yeah. fake rapper name. And it's just like the soundboard's great because it's a shitty soundboard. And then they, they pay it off at the end by revealing that it's a soundboard to the guy. So he flips out and you get to watch him do that. Hmm. But it's just like, yo, bitch, I'm Bobo Dakes. <laughs> It's like and just like the same yup over and over again. Like the soundboard <laughs> is is super obvious, but you know it's the soundboard. So like even that stuff it has its lighthearted kind of fun in it. I think, um, but yeah. It, so I mean, you know, the enemy is big data at the end of yeah. it, okay. right? You know, it's the same CTOS system from sh the the previous mm -hmm. game, uh, but then they've kind of layered on like a Facebook and Google equivalent, who are then intertwined with the CTOS company in terms of just like how the data is flowing in and out. And this idea of like, Oh, you bought all these smart home cameras. Well, guess what? They're watching you order pizza and raising your insurance rates and all this other stuff. And then you as your hacker collective are basically serving as like this weird mix up of like anonymous and WikiLeaks. Okay. 
which is exhausting right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes. Is but, everything super on the nose with this? It sounds like a lot of it is. Yeah. 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 It's like very, I, very know, obvious. Like you're completing missions and then it's producing anonymous style videos where it's got you know, <laughs> hard cuts and sure. all this other stuff and we're I, exposing the truth. And, I, I would be um, willing to bet that it has ended up being a lot more on the nose than they planned on it being. <laughs> totally. Huh. I have to wonder, like, like I bet the, internally they were watching everything <laughs> happening around everything as this game was getting ready to come out. It's going like, mm. <laughs> This might not help us. This mm. might not help. Or it might help us all the way in yeah. terms of getting our game out there. But like some of that stuff right now with the way things have gone, like it just it just rings a little weird. Um and and yeah. Like so having that stuff at the end of every mission, like, oh, you took down the the game's like Church of Scientology equivalent, and now you're leaking the data and leaking it out there, dead sec leaks and all this other stuff. And it's just like fuck. <laughs> Come on. Uh yeah. So, but going yeah. back to like the, the tone, are they still taking themselves a little too seriously with that stuff, or they're taking themselves seriously as like idealistic hacktivist uh, kids, like five mm. five kids changing the world type stuff? Yeah. yeah. But yeah. like, but like that that plays as like, oh, you fucking knuckleheads. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, right. I think in, I think in the, a lot of ways. Probably uh, the key difference is like I only played like two hours the first game, but yeah. I would describe that game as pretty humorless. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so I, I think it, it plays a lot better here. Like they're okay. they're fun characters. It's it feels vibrant, good uh, in a way that the first game definitely, in a way that most games don't actually. I think the like I, I found myself wishing that like these characters were maybe in like a better game in some mm. cases, okay. um, because I think that like the the those characters are capable of being in, in a more interesting story and and doing more interesting thing. But like yeah, you know, th like I said, a lot of open world games have characters act one way, but then the gameplay acts a different way. This one, I oh, feel sure. like, takes that to maybe slightly new levels because the writing is... It's not lighthearted in, like, a GTA satirical way. It's lighthearted in a, we're going to change the world, you guys. Yeah, awesome. Mm. And then they're going to go out and, and have fun doing it and kind of fuck with people while we're doing it. But then you're, like, printing fucking sniper rifles and shotguns <laughs> out of a 3D printer. Yeah. And you're like, we're going to change the world. <laughs> Fuck everybody. We're murdering them all. Right, like, right. It, it's a, it's like, at a certain point, they couldn't resist the, the idea that, or the fact that they were making an open world game. I think, I think I'm having more fun with that game with my added restriction of not using... Because you have a stun gun. Yeah. And you, you can yeah. upgrade the stun gun. do um, you have a yo-yo, too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's... But that's, like, walk up melee. to people behind them and choke them out. It, you right. can do a melee attack up close, too. But that's, like... Just dispatch this guy. Uh, so, so it might as well be a neck break or, a, uh, you know, a sleeper hold or, you know, whatever. Right. It's it's not like some big melee combat weapon. So are you basically trying to go non-lethal? Yeah. Yeah. Except That's... for the part where I keep calling in gangs that are murdering <laughs> sure. each other. Like, so that, that, that was, was, that was where... The, and so that's the thing. Like, there's this moral relativism that <laughs> yeah. happens in the game as a result of how you play it. And I think that's, that's fine. Yeah. Like, GTA, you know, like all these other games have had that exact problem. Right. I don't think it's worth hanging this one over, but because of the tone of the writing in this game and what you're trying to accomplish, trying to help the people, all this other stuff, to have it go from one side mission where it's like, that guy's swatting people? Man, that's not cool. We need to teach him a lesson by swatting him. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and and but I've, whatever, that sequence ends, but then, yeah, you're literally calling the cops on people and having them show yeah, up. It, yeah. It's... It's a little. I, I've read about a couple others, like maybe maybe their side missions. I don't know, but there, it sounds like there's definitely a little bit of dissonant stuff there. Totally. In terms of like your methods versus the methods you're trying to fight. Yeah. But yeah. It, yes. At some point, it it becomes. At, at some point, that whole thing becomes very gray in a way that the writing doesn't address. Right. And I wish I it would. Oh man, if they had actually had the tone of the characters change ever so slightly over the course of that game. Like almost like a dishonored thing where it's like, oh, a lot of rats, a lot of rats. Like, the, sure. like this is going to go bad by the end. Like if they had done something along those lines to address like, oh, you fucking murdered a bunch of people along yeah. the way. Like, like, oh, bad. You, like yeah. hey, you, hey, guess what? You became the thing you were trying to stop. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, like that's that's a way more interesting game. Yeah. Um, because at the beginning they kind of address like, oh man, there's there's no leaders to this collective, and you know it's the Bay Area, so it's everything from hacktivists to anarchists, like the, everything in between. And, you know, that's that so far has been the one line that I feel has been directed at like, hey, there's going to be a lot of methods employed here. But it, the fun loving like, yeah, we're hacking people and then producing fun videos. Let's go <laughs> spray paint our logo here. 
Let's go in and murder all of these <laughs> security guards who you can see how much money they make and what they do on the side and how come so many people in this town write slash. They should have come up with more fucking descriptors for people because I've encountered too nah. many people that just says write slash. Nah, the man, that shit's everywhere. Maybe it is. Maybe it is, man. Maybe it's fucking happening underneath it's us. Modern and society I just don't know. is kinky as fuck. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I agree, but like writing slash just seems like it takes a lot of fucking work. Mm, what yes. is slash? It's slash fiction. What is slash fiction? It's slash fiction, like Kirk Spock, is that fan like fiction? all that sort of stuff. It's a type of fan fiction, yeah. Dan, okay, Dan slash Waluigi. Yeah. Oh, is this like Overwatch porn? Sure. Okay. Okay. Sure. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's in the ballpark. No, but okay. yes. No. Okay. Um, I'm confused again. <laughs> so, I, I mean, even if it's not internally consistent the whole way through, I think that the fact the writing is successful enough to make you of all people want to do it non lethally. Yeah, like hmm. you know, like you're you're somebody who likes to just fucking guns blaze through most games. Yeah, but like, like I, and I think the shooting in this game is is fine. It's yeah. it's pretty yeah. standard and it's not that interesting. Right. Uh, like you, if you had a sniper rifle in that game, it, it, and I should I'll try it at some point because it seems like it would just make the game painfully easy. Because yeah. if you could just sit back and just like, well, there's eight guards in this place right. and just wait for them to walk around corners pop, 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 and pop, 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 yeah. pop. Okay, let's walk in here and do our thing. Yeah, like, like you could absolutely do that. Because um, you get like remote charges and stuff that you can just have a like an EMP go out and stun yep. guys, right? Yeah, and then you can upgrade that to be just straight up IEDs. But you don't have to, right? Like uh, you, you and your right. playthrough don't have to do. I that. mean, they yeah. don't they yeah. don't incentivize non lethality in any way, right? Nope, not at all. So like in it's, fact, it's like like non lethal takedowns, those people can be woken up. Mm. So uh, I mean, yeah, you're, if anything. It is way easier to murder these people. Yeah, yeah. you're going for the European but, big boss rating, right? Yeah, okay. exactly. Well, that's yeah. what I'm saying, though. Like, I think it's cool that the presentation of the story and just the atmosphere and the tone are enough to make you want to not, yes, yeah, to right. not fall into that. Ultimately, I think it's a positive thing. Yeah. Like, like yeah. the game should have options for people that want to play it different ways because it's an open world game and that's the expectation. Right. Uh, like, so obviously they should do that sort of stuff. Um, and I think their 3D printed weapons actually look kind of cool. You can paint <laughs> them up and like, you know, I, I printed a fucking assault rifle or SMG or something like that that just had a big skull on the end of it. Because <laughs> okay. when you're 3D printing guns, who cares? Like yeah. a physical one or like a decal? Yeah, like a physical skull. Okay. <laughs> huh. Cool. It's just... All right. That game's fucking silly. Yeah. You know, Shadows it, of the Damned Gun. Yeah. You know, it, it's got like, you know, all the, the, the graphic design and stuff like that that they've shown in the months and months prior to this game's mm -hmm. release. Like, I think a lot of it looked really corny on its own. But the way they've integrated all that stuff into the game, ASCII art and weird skulls and weird fucking horror paint and all this other stuff, like, I think it works. I don't think it necessarily reads like 2016 hacker culture or like what kids in the Bay are into or what, like, it doesn't quite fit that stuff. But I think they, they achieve a tone all their own that I, I think is actually like pretty good. I, I think it's not as distracting as like the early trailers had us worrying like, yeah. you know, the early trailers were like, eh, this is going to be rough. And then playing it, it's not so in your face. Or the stuff that is isn't so aggressively annoying or anything. Right. It, it fits. Yeah, it, it fits. And, <clears throat> like, the ragtag adventures of these five characters are six or, you know, you add people to your crew over the course of the game. Like, people join up and, you know, there's a character from the previous game that kind of comes along for the ride at one point that's... I was actually interested to see, like, weirdly enough, like, say what you will about Watch Dogs 1, it was boring and, mm. and all that stuff, but when I saw that character, and then, like, actually the light went on, like, oh, that's that guy from the first game. I was like, oh, that's actually kind of cool. Okay. Did uh, he have an iconic hat? No. Okay. No, he did not. Uh, I mean, he had a hat. Okay. But, but no. Um, yeah, there's, you know, like, there's a fake Burning Man in that game, and, and it's actually, like, a really good sequence. Like, there's a really good use of, like, fuck it, we've got to get out to the desert and... What do they call their fake burning? Uh, <laughs> Swelter Skelter. <laughs> it's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. pretty good. Like, there's a whole sequence there that is, like, a really, like, interesting departure. Like, it, it, it serves as a good, like, okay, some fucking shit went down. This is going to be the thing that, like, we jut... The, the rest of the game happens from this moment forward. Like, it, it's a very good roadblock in mm. the progression of just, like... Okay. Some fucking bad shit happened. We got to get our shit together and fucking okay. Now let's do this for how, real. How how contemporary is their Burning Man analog? Is there a it's, fucking? It's is, there, is, there, not. is there a fucking RV t city of Silicon Valley executives? If there is, with, I, with if, private chefs. If there is, I didn't find it. Like <laughs> okay. it seems like their their fake festival in this game felt a lot more like nine. What I know of <laughs> as nineties yeah. Burning Man. Okay, sure. Um, weird, which is a little weird, but um. Yeah, it's, you know, I, I'm all over the place and talking about it because I'm still in the middle of playing it. Um, and it's got this online stuff that is broken uh, right now. Yeah, they, they put out they, like a release or yeah, something. Yeah, they're like, hey, hey, like the seamless multiplayer will be offline at launch because right. we've got problems with it. 
Yeah, okay. uh, which seems like a bummer. I don't really know what that entails because I've been playing it prior to release, so there hasn't really been any seamless multiplayer to speak of. But also last night as I was playing, someone jumped, like it did the thing from the first game where there's a hacker trying to hack you and mm -hmm. you need to figure out which of these AI looking characters is actually a real person huh. and get them out of the game. Like that happened. And so I don't know what the seamless, seamless multiplayer means because you can still go into a menu and invite a friend and still do that stuff. So maybe that just meant a friend of mine because my session was open jumped into mine. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know what it means because I don't know how the, their seamless multiplayer is supposed to work. So uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see how that stuff actually works. I, I found that stuff to be a distraction in the first game of just like, hey, I'm trying to do a thing and yeah. oh, now there's a person. <clears throat> like, no, like like the way it's integrated here seems the same. Like, no, I, you can always opt out, right? Uh, Well, yeah, I guess you I think you so. Just, like, turn off, I open, you just join, play offline. I, yeah, you certainly just play offline. I, I don't, I don't know if there's an easier way to do it than that. But you know, like I had just finished the 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 Bobo Dakes mission, <laughs> and then I was like, okay, well, I'm going to jump back in this fancy fake Tesla I've got here and drive it at ludicrous speeds. And then suddenly, someone was in there hacking my shit, and I was like, is, oh man, I got to stop and do this. Is there actually much point in driving around? Because it seems like <clears throat> yeah, fast, fast the, travel the, is just the like fast there travel from system, the, the fast travel system sucks in that yeah. game. So yes, okay. Uh, what is it? Uh, you can fast travel to shops, okay. so and and uh, side mission like the the races. So I can I can fast travel to the motocross races or like a clothing shop or a car store mm -hmm. or that or the hacker spaces, which are kind of your HQs. There are like three or four of them around the, and that's where the three D printers are. If you want to, you know, go back and print a new gun or something like that. Do you have to go to one of the stores or shops first in order to initiate? Uh, no, or? no, okay. you can just fast travel to all of those, but you can't fast travel to mission points. So you'll have cases where mm. even though a mission is set in a clothing store, if I go to the icon that's for the mission, I cannot fast travel. If I move it just oh, think, weird. Uh, over to the clothing store icon, I can yeah. fast travel. And so you'll have cases where there's a mission up the street from a motocross race point, And you're just like, well, I'm going to fucking, f I have to fast travel to this motocross race, then go back into my phone, which is, it is too many, is, it is a little too cumbersome for uh -huh. its own good. Then highlight the mission again to get it to draw the the GPS path because it clears it when I fast travel and then go. Weird. At some point, it's just like, dude, just let people fast travel to the mission starts. Like yeah. it's, it's yeah. you can get close enough most of the time that it's like not a hassle, except for it is a hassle. Mm -hmm. So they should have just caved and been like, all right, yeah, you can fast travel to missions. Like, can you it. can you hack boost any car? Yeah, I think that's a funny stupid. Once thing. you buy the upgrade. And Just like any car, like an old car you can get in, and all of a sudden yeah. it's got nitrous. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Hacking, right? Hacking. Okay. Yeah. You use your botnet to hack this thing because okay. like, you, you need a botnet to run these sploits. <laughs> okay. Um, Do they say sploit? No, they don't. Okay. Uh, at least not yet. I, I would not be surprised. <laughs> sploits sounds like something that would definitely come out of they it. They do say zero day. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There are yeah. zero day hacks in this game. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how meaningful this is to people that don't live here, but... Right, the depiction of San Francisco. It's really good. Pretty it good. It's great, really man. good. Pretty good. Uh, and and yeah. So uh, someone asked me this morning, like, do you think it's better or worse than the divisions New York City? And the answer is, I have no fucking idea, <laughs> right? Because I don't know. I've been to New York City, yeah. but I don't know New York City. Yeah. yeah. Whereas in this, like, the Ubisoft office is in the right place. Like, you can kind of navigate yeah. by feel. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes. Weirdly yeah. enough, like, you, like, like you, you, I saw you drive up to the Ubisoft office, and I was like, yeah, that's exactly where I'd expect yeah, that to be. That's, I, that's I exactly walked to that office many times, and then the ballpark's right there, and it's like, okay, well. The Castro is where it's supposed to be. Yep. So if you're like, oh, I'm in the Castro, I need to get Fisherman's Wharf. Like I know how to get there. There's right. Market Street. Like the first thing I did was just drive to the Sunset, just you know, without looking at the map, and it yeah. works totally fine. Like one of the first yeah. mission objectives is is walk to Mission Dolores Park. Right. It's it's yeah weird. Uh, and it's a pretty good. I mean, obviously they're 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 shrinking it down a lot. Yeah. Especially a, when you get one to one. Yeah. yeah. No, especially no, no, when no. you get out of San Francisco and it's just like oh. 30 seconds from here is Palo Alto. That, that's, and then, it actually can fuck with you because it's like, oh, well, I'm on 1st Street and I'm going to go and I'm going to drive five blocks over right. and think I should be on 6th, but oh no, now you're in the sunset. Yeah. Like, like yeah. you kind of fly across town in two which, seconds. Which, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, like, kudos to them for making a really good San Francisco, but I think yeah. by and large, if you don't live here, none of that Oh matters. yeah, it's meaningless. It's, it doesn't yeah. mean anything. Uh, but, but It's a lot better than the driver cool. San Francisco That was That was one. the yeah. thing I was thinking, was the driver San Francisco was like super fuzzy. Also better than yeah, the crew. With a lot of that stuff. <laughs> Right, the crew is definitely. I mean, you know, they got a whole city. Uh, yeah, whole the crew. The crew yeah. is that is yeah is that phenomenon writ large, right? Yeah, it's the whole country. How big is the Bay Area? Like, can you go over to Oakland or? Yeah, Oakland mm -hmm. is oh, is looking a, a look, chunk of the game. Looking at the map you showed me, Oakland is like what pretty small six blocks or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> same with the uh, Marin and yeah, South. Mar Marin is barely South there. Bay, like right? Sausalito's there. It's kind of like once you get north of the Golden Gate Bridge, it's a little. 
you know, it's it's a little off. Did you try to find ferry? the giant bomb office? Yeah, yeah. Sausalito's not there. Uh, so second, uh, the, the street we're on now, or that, or the Sausalito office? The Sausalito Sausalito's office. not really there. Uh, I mean, Sausalito's it's, it's very, like, a, like a dock with boats. <laughs> it looks, it's which very, is, very like rural above the yeah, bridge. Right. Can you go to Alcatraz? Yes. Yes? Okay, yeah. cool. Uh, yeah, you can fast travel out there even, because there's a, a clothing store there. Okay. Uh, like tour, tourist <laughs> stand or whatever yeah, for, sure. for stuff. Uh, but yeah, once you get once you get outside of San Francisco, everything gets really small, really fast. Like there's just an area that's just marked Silicon Valley, and that's where the fake Google office are. Is it, it Noodle? Uh, yeah, Noodle. Yeah, uh, that's a pretty good. There's a mission where you're walking around there doing stuff. That's that's pretty good. Like their campus. Uh, yeah. Okay. In terms of just like addressing the character and the nature of diversity in tech and stuff huh. like that. There's some stuff in there. that's like, oh, okay, you actually are going. Like the game kind of doesn't go there. The kind of the game so far has been pretty neutral about everything, and then suddenly it's like commenting about the nature of being a black dude in an all white company, and you're huh. like, man, wow, okay, yeah, hmm. uh, that I thought was 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 well done, not super in your face, uh, hmm. but That's great. but it's a nice, it's a it's a good nod to that stuff, and I wonder how much more of it there would even be. Um, yeah, it's a it's a neat game. I, I don't think it's like an amazing open world game. I think a lot of the side activities are kind of drab uh, and and just standard. And like I said, a lot too much of that game so far has been about me trying to figure out ways to get on top of buildings, and <sighs> that stuff's not super fun. Um, but yeah, I, I think the the writing and the tone is definitely seeing me through. Like I definitely want to finish this game, uh, and some That's of the side activities yeah. have been have mm. been interesting enough to huh. to kind of see how where they go and it's cool and, it's cool they found an identity for this series totally. that works yeah after the first one was kind of limp yeah it's 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 and it's an identity that like games don't have yeah you know like you don't you don't see a lot of this type of stuff in games like it's yeah. they're they're writing youth culture in a way that i'm not going to say is 100 percent authentic right but it's better than most games but it's right? way better than most it games. almost makes me think back to stuff like i don't know like maybe getting up is a good hmm. comparison or just, uh, yeah, of, I mean, this, this is know, just, a little more lighthearted than that. Oh, no, like, no, I don't mean that it's, yeah. like, similar tonally necessarily, yeah. but in terms of, like... The, a jet hitting, grind. Hitting the mark. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Jet Set Radio. Like, just, yeah. just games that hit the mark right. a little bit better than you would expect. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Uh, yeah, I, 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 yeah, there are parallels there, for yeah. sure. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to finishing it. Um, but at the same time, like, playing it in large chunks, like, I found myself kind of getting bored with some of it. Mm. because Just because, like I said, some of the side stuff is is good so the the generic side stuff is as generic as it could possibly be um and some of the mechanics are just like all right guys i get it the internet because like literally at, your xp are just followers you know so it's like everything you do gets you followers and they write it into the story where like followers are people that are installing our app and giving us permission to use their yeah. phones as part of our botnet right and right. you're like, okay, yeah, oh, all see. right. And there's even you, a character. You up a reason. There's even a character that's like, is is this ethical to harness the horsepower of all the people who install our app? And they're like, no, we're open and transparent. They know that going in. They're joining the cause. Yeah, uh, they're joining the cause of me printing this shotgun and right. then murdering cops. <laughs> that's what they're in for. Yeah, it's whatever. Yeah, it it's fun. Uh, there's you can do some fun stuff in that game with the abilities and uh, the drones seem fun too. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's cool. it's. It's all right. The game's all right. Cool. Cool. Yeah, that's super encouraging. Yeah, the, the initial, you know, yeah. media blast that we got, you know, from that game, the tone just seems so far off. But yep. Yeah. It's, yeah, it was, it was hard to know how that thing was going to pan out. Exactly. For sure. That's um, cool. But but yeah, it's cool. And then, uh, so I did, uh, I, I ran an extra life stream over the weekend. Oh, right, yeah. I did a, I did a hot 24. Damn. Um, How'd you hold up? Uh, it was fine uh, until the last 90 minutes or two hours or so. And then the mm. bottom dropped out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Actually, the whole thing went way faster than I thought it was, was yeah, going it to does. like, uh, it went from like one thirty to five super fast. Mm. And I thought that like two to five was going to be the dark time. That was gonna be the hardest part. Mm. But before I knew it, the sun was coming up and I was like, Oh shit. But then as soon as I saw that, then it was like, Oh, I've been up for 28 hours. <laughs> Cause I woke up. Uh, uh. So I actually, <laughs> like I, I ended up playing through smash TV <laughs> and I think I fell asleep like a dozen times playing it. <laughs> wow. Just like for just a brief nod off. Just, <laughs> uh, okay. And then hearing the character die going, shit. Yeah. <laughs> and and waking up. Uh, <laughs> so great. I'm in the middle. Actually, I started part two of that uploading right before we, we came in here. So cool. I'm slowly getting those up on the site. I have to trim them a little bit. Congrats, man. My mic arm fell 
off the desk. Oh, I, oh, I, yeah. I need to modify my desk to get that mic arm to cl- bolt mm. to it cleanly. Yeah, even so, like that Blue Yeti microphone that she uses, that's yeah. super heavy. Yeah, it is. Well. Yeah. The, the, the arm, like the, 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 the arm can handle it. The yeah. mount can handle it. But I don't have a, a flat spot on the bottom of my desk that I can screw the bottom of the mount gotcha. to, so it's kind of half screwed in. <gasps> so like, I started the stream and then grabbed the mic and moved it, and then the whole thing just went. I'm like, nice. shit. I went and found a mic stand half like a couple hours in, and it was fine. Uh, but anyway, I so uh, over the course of that, I played a bunch of old games that were fun and all that sort of stuff. But I also got to level fifty and regenerated in Titanfall. Hmm. Uh, which, oh, cool! Which was which was cool to finally do. Um, that game's really good. I got some XP if you need help. Uh, yeah, no, okay. thanks. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, and I started playing Hitman. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Some of that. Uh, so I played through the training stuff and then played through the first mission. I walked the catwalk. Yep. <laughs> Oh yeah! Uh, oh, the ship thing? No, uh, the, no I, I did. Paris. I did the ship thing, and then did Paris. Oh, and the, oh, oh, that catwalk. Yeah, oh, I was thinking a, plank. That's somehow. Plank. Yeah. S- somehow, your first experience with a fire extinguisher made its way to me. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Huh. That uh, seems to be the litmus test at this point. <laughs> hmm. It's really satisfying. <laughs> something about that. Something about that two-handed. <laughs> it's overhand, fucking crazy. Overhead, like overhead like everything curl. about throwing objects yeah. and murdering yeah. people in that game is fucking insane. Yep. yep. And I love <laughs> so. Uh, so yeah, so I get that fire extinguisher and I'm like, oh, that seems like a, that would be a good item to hit this fucking <laughs> chef with. And that's, it's telling me to do it. So I'm like, all right, well, <laughs> this tutorial says to do it. So all right. Uh, I missed with the fire extinguisher because he stepped out of the way. Mm, yeah. And then he just talked some shit and then went back to what he was doing. Yeah. I was like, that's yep. the dumbest thing ever. <laughs> yep. Video games are the best. And then I had a hammer. So, but I like the savagery is that I'm facing away from him. <laughs> And locked on to him. Oh, yeah. And the animation of him just faced away with his hammers going, yep. yeah. is just <laughs> all the animations. <laughs> all the, so, mm, and the like, sound. The yeah, sound, too. Yeah. All the, like, Dunk. yeah, every throwing or takedown animation and all the dialogue that comes out of them as you're doing yeah. it. Like, yeah. I've walked up to a guy with a wrench before, and as I started to swing, he goes, Not the face. And, like, you take him down <laughs> in the middle of the line. Nice. Uh, <laughs> that game seems fucking great. It's, yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, I uh, I got I got deeper into that escalation mission I was trying to do on UPF yeah. with the, the Great Dane mm-hmm. and all that shit. Those things get insanely hard. Oh, some I bet. of the crazy because yeah. that's like kind of considered I guess a late game one being on the second oh, to last map. Sure. Yeah. The last condition they just threw in for me on that one is someone is stalking you. Oh wow! That's that's oh, the wow. that's the text display <laughs> or that's what the, the the modifier says. And then you get in there and sure enough there is a guy in like. All black, like tactical gear, ski mask, like no face, huh? With a shotgun, just wandering around the level, looking for you constantly. <laughs> and then it's if he super does ominous, you? and he'll see through everything yeah, you're he wearing. Sees through everything. Yeah. Uh, he's got the little dots, so he's, okay. so if he gets within range, you're just done. Can you take him out? Wow. Do you, so, do you have to take him out? So I managed it the first time they rolled it in. I, uh-huh. I was like, I finally, I managed to lure him around a corner and take him out, and it felt amazing. They should have given him the Michael Myers mask. Well, that's I, already <laughs> in that map. <laughs> well, then I know it's worse because he's just all this all black, like ominous figure with a shot. <laughs> And then the fourth level of that thing, after I successfully did that, the condition they added was you can no longer pacify the stalker. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to do everything in yeah. that escalation, which is already super hard with a guy just wandering around looking for you constantly. <laughs> Terminator. Yeah. It is creepy and tense as hell. That's wow. awesome. That's Yeah. It's really something. Uh, yeah. This is probably the first time that I've liked a Hitman game. Yeah. It's the best it's one. Just, yeah, yeah. Same here for sure. Yeah. It's a uh, very strong start. Yeah. The, yeah, the more I play it, the more I like it. Like there's yeah. just there are there are legitimately really satisfying stealth mechanics to dig into mm-hmm. there on and, top on top of all the absurdity. Yeah, just hilarious, perfectly dumb stuff, and then also a really good game yeah. surrounding yeah. It, it. It seems like it's also pretty good about like the the uh, the opportunities and stuff like that of like letting you see like hey, here's a path you can take yeah. to do this, mm-hmm. uh, and and it was like going through that on the. Uh, the the end of the training and just like oh wait I can rig up this ejector seat and. <laughs> Make this fucker okay, yeah, yeah. all right, let's yeah. do that. That yeah. seems like a fucking good dumb thing to do. Let's do that. Let's definitely do that. Yep. Uh like like showing you the fun, I think is super smart. Because if it was just like, hey, there are a million ways to do this, have fun. Yeah. Like you would never find most of them. But mm-hmm. you can do it that way if right. you want to. Which yeah, is you can great. turn that stuff off, yep. right? Because that's yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and key. I I used to feel I used to feel kind of guilty or like I was shortchanging myself by following all those opportunities mm. because like they really are, if you turn on every prompt and like every objective indicator, like right. they really are sort of just a paint by numbers, like do exactly what we say right. and you will see the funny kill. But the more you play the game, the more you start going outside of that. Like, right. The more you start seeing other goofy opportunities that the game doesn't like enshrine in mechanics. Yeah. 
uh, that you can get into on your own and you yeah. start feeling more I think open that's, ended about that, it. That's, a, that's probably a pretty wise way to handle it. Yeah. So I, I think that's the, the whole thing with Hitman of being able to kind of do whatever and find different ways to get these kills and stuff like that yeah. is great. Yep. But I think that people will feel in, I would have felt a sli- slightly in over my head, I think, mm-hmm. if I had just yes. been dumped into that mission mm-hmm. and had not seen you guys play any of it. And just been like, okay, now what? I yeah. guess I'm just gonna walk up to this guy and kill. Like I wouldn't have done, tried to even do anything mm-hmm. fun because it would have been like, oh well, I haven't really seen anything. I mean, I, I guess I see that, but I don't know how to get yeah. him over there. It's, it it could be like, overwhelming. Yeah, like, like, like to, kind to, of to, leaning into just the idea of just like, hey, here's some things you can do, and you know, this is knowledge you could probably apply yep. to every that's, part of the game. That's it's how like, it works. Here are some things yeah. you could, you know, think yeah. about this. Like, to, think to, about this. To, to use a, to use the Dave Lang term, like the possibility space is just immense when you first start playing that right. game. Right. Like there's so many things you could do that it's hard to kind of get a, a handle on what you should. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that <laughs> stuff opens up. Yeah, yeah, uh, and that game seems really good. Yep, that's pretty much it for right. me. I think. Cool. Yeah. Um, Jason, yo, let's talk about Dishonored. Yeah, let's two. let's talk about that. Dishonored that game. second. Um, You've been it's been kind of a that. slow slow burn yeah. on that. Yeah, I was yeah. a big fan of the uh, the the first game, and uh, you know they just kind of thrust you in into the second one. You know, you get to play as Emily or Corvo. Mm-hmm. Um. And you're, you're stuck with that character through yeah. the, the entirety yeah. of the game. You don't yeah, have to, we, like flop back and forth or anything like yeah. that. We watched you start a Corvo mm. game on UPF. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, you know, the setup of the story is, you know, you've got this long lost aunt. She seems super evil because she's like a Skeletor fucking equivalent. So, like, if mm. you listen to her voice, she's yeah. just like cackling and she sounds evil. Um, yeah, so she takes your throne essentially and casts odds, you out. Odds that she's actually your aunt. Uh, you know, it's funny, like, you know, it's, it's unclear, yeah. but you also, you know what, you're carrying around the heart of like your mother and you, and she's chatty, right? And you of think you could just ask her, Hey mom, is, is this lady for real? She really, you, yeah. The you heart really talks? Yeah. The heart talks. Oh, this was a medical okay. game. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it, I mean, the, the, the plot of the story is, is, is really one of the, I think the worst, um, things about the game in that it's really, really stiff and just kind of mm. trite and okay. whatever. Um, the voice acting we heard seemed pretty rough. I've definitely seen other people kind of complaining about yeah, a lot Cor- of the Corvo performances. in particular. Yeah, yeah. his performance seems super, super dry and just not like really well delivered. Mm-hmm. And uh, some of the other characters as well. But I, it, it's getting a lot better. Uh, like I said, it's it's super growing on me. Is it just like kind of as you go further down, kind of the the upgrade tree? Like it's just <laughs> becoming a better game, or is yeah, it just a little there, bit there just um, better sequences. As I get to new sequ- sequences or set pieces, you know, uh, I think they do environmental storytelling like masterclass, like mm. second to none. Like wow. you get into a room and it's like, holy shit, what happened here? You've got a dead body here. They're sitting around like a card table or, or whatever. Shit went bad. So you kind of. It's it's really neat going into all these different rooms and just like trying to piece together what the hell happened, uh, and it's been enthralling. And as such, like I find myself just looking in every nook and cranny mm. and just trying to take in as mm. much like of the environment as possible. Yeah. And it's been super interesting. So when I go through a level, man, it's taken me like three four hours to get through some of this stuff uh, because it's, it, it's littered with uh, really interesting NPCs and you know the set pieces, of course, and then you know trying to find all the collectibles like the runes. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, runes are what you use to actually, you know, upgrade those right. are like your experience points or whatever. So in this game, they they now have a like a tree of sorts. Uh, you know, whereas before it was just kind of pick and choose. Um, uh, in this game, so you get the ability to well the supernatural abilities like you know from the overseer or outsider, I guess is is what he's called. Uh, so you can get some like really cool shadow powers. Emily's really focused on some of that supernatural like. Uh, uh, sneakiness, I guess. Uh, Corvo still has some of those powers, but is a, more about like time bending and okay. stuff like that. So, are you doing an Emily playthrough primarily? I am doing yeah. an Emily playthrough, yeah. And she's been, yeah, way more interesting. I guess, oh, yeah, she's so. and she's obviously she's going to be the one that's more different from the first game, right? Yeah, like I assume Corvo stuff is all built on what he had. Yeah, in the first yeah, game. F- yeah, for the most part. With but does she, does she still blink and stuff like that? Is it still about she's, that? She's got, yeah, effects similarly of that. It's called like Far Reach, where it's it's more of a physical movement, okay. you know, like a va- fast like a, zip. Like a, like a dash? Yeah, yeah, as opposed to like that blink, like yeah. teleport that, that okay. Corvo has. So, And that actually works uh, both ways. You can upgrade that to like pull things closer to you. Hmm. One of the most fun things that I've that I've been doing so far is actually pulling enemy tw- an enemy towards me. And they like fly through the air. And just as they get you know close to you, you can choose to choke them out or just like, you know, fucking slash them and kill them uh, in midair. Uh, the combat's been really satisfying, but super frustrating at first. Mm. 
whole lot of trial and error in that yeah. game. Uh, it, it doesn't look, from the little bit I've seen you play of it, it didn't look incredibly elegant to me. No. There's a little bit of just kind of wa- f- waving a sword around first, and yeah. it just sort of spammy. Uh, yeah, a whole lot of fumbling. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, once you get kind of locked into like a, a good groove, uh, it'll feel a lot better. I think you'll, you'll, you'll find out, you know, when you're supposed to attack mm-hmm. and when you're supposed to block and, uh, you know, uh, that parry system works really, really well. Mm-hmm. You know, you block an attack, and then you can, you know, do a one hit like a takedown or you know, kill or something like that. Uh, but that doesn't work against all enemies, which is actually pretty great. So um, I started fighting those clockwork soldiers, uh, and we saw them in the in the quick look, and I was just kind of bashing them with the sword, and that was kind of effective. Shit's changed now, and I cannot mm-hmm. do that. And I was really banging my head against the walls, like, is this game super hard? Am I super bad? What the fuck's going on? It's as it turns out, you're just not supposed to like bash them to shit. It's not I, a game about open combat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I found out that you know I can actually snipe their head off with mm. just a one crossbow bolt, and that just like incapacitates them for the most part. Like they can still hear you, and if you get too close and make a noise, they'll come after you. But I mean, that's how you're supposed to fight mm. them. So mm. there, there's a lot of rules for like it, each of the enemies that you've you've got to like adhere to uh, in order to be kind of effective in that game. But um, I like the way they handled severed heads. Yeah, I have oh, to say. that you can pick them up. Yeah, just, oh. just the way that's presented <laughs> as you're carrying the severed head around. It gets visceral. Yeah. Like when you're, yeah, doing like those one hit kills or like, you know, uh, taking them out from behind or something, man, you can you can chop off limbs and they go flying and end up in a drawer somewhere. And it's like, okay. where, the, where did this right arm come from? It's, it's pretty ridiculous. Uh, but uh, really fun, yeah. you know, once I got into it. And I'm about... I think at the fourth chapter, which is a little more than halfway halfway through, they start introducing new enemies. You know, some of the witches that uh, we saw in uh, like the DLC uh, of the first game. Okay. Um, so yeah, there's a, there's a big you know supernatural like religious uh, tone in that game, but also you know the the whale punky and the you know new tech fucking shit. It, yeah. It's it's cool. It's a really cool universe, and I I'm really enjoying like exploring it. Okay. And the combat's getting better and better. Um, characters getting a little more interesting. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the the huge drive. Like I'm not invested in the plot at mm-hmm. all, uh, like I was in the in the first game. You know, in the first game, you know, you've you've got this little girl to save and and, and stuff, and you get I think emotionally invested right away. I did anyway, uh, especially with some of the characters. But I'm not finding that in this one. So the the plot is yeah. Just and you've you've been playing on PC, me. right? I've been playing on PC. Yeah, there's definitely Sounds been like some the, yeah, performance issues kind of across the board. Like you need. Some high end shit in order to get it to to run well, and I've got some pretty high end shit. I've got like a nine eighty, you know, really good processor, and I'm I'm getting some dips here and there. Mm-hmm. It's it's kind of weird uh, playing on the PC here at work. It's it's fine, yeah. but right. I've been looking at some comparison stuff with the consoles, and they seem to be holding up, and they look really good too. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they said they're working on PC stuff. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's a patch coming through. Yeah. I I have no doubt they're gonna fix that stuff. So yeah, yeah the first game ran really really well. It's very well optimized. I think. I figure I'm going to try this at some point, but I, I don't know. Like, I the first game was just completely lost on me. Yeah, yeah I, I, I played Never that first, first few either. hours or whatever yep, and yeah. just kind of walked away from it. So, like, I just don't know what to expect if it's if it's any different in a way that's going to hit me differently one way or the other. It, uh, I, watching, I you, think, watching you play it on Friday, yeah. I was like, okay, they, it's another. Okay, they made it. Is, it is they totally, made, they yeah. made another one of those. There's, yeah, it is totally another one of those. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, the things that they've kind of... Uh, did, Improved upon, I think it's a, a better stealth game. Yeah. Um, okay, then that that actually probably helps because yeah. I, I feel like that was like the, I never felt comfortable with blinking and and never felt comfortable with like can this guy see me here? Yeah. Yes or no? Yeah, I have similar issues. Like some of that stuff just didn't click for me. Yeah. So and I think you're gonna if, find the okay, same if, amount of that in mm, here. Okay. Um, like I said, there's a lot of trial and errors. And yeah, there's yeah. been several instances where she's like. Okay, I see these two guys. I see their routes. I'm gonna go after this guy, and all of a sudden, the other guy sees me, and I don't know why or how. It, it's a little confusing. Yeah. So no, I'll uh, give it a shot. A, I feel like if I'm gonna play a stealth game, it's gonna be the one with Helmet Kruger in it. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, did he become Helmet Kruger? Yeah. I, yeah. Okay. I became Helmet Kruger. Dude, he's great. Helmet Kruger is the Rosetta Stone. He <laughs> is the skeleton key <laughs> of that level. He yeah. can do anything. Yeah. And uh, he's so easy to get. <laughs> Yeah. But you really don't need to play this game stealthily. You know, you can kind of, you know, pick your shots okay. and, you know, to just go through and murder everybody, which is actually how I'm playing, mm-hmm. which has been really fun, especially with those shadow powers. But wouldn't that be a bad ending? Uh, you think they'll do that again? And, and you know what? Do you have you, is there been care. any implications? Can you see one way or the other? If yeah, because in the first game, they showed that, that, right? Didn't they, wasn't there like a straight up 
sub menu that showed your alignment in the yeah, first game? Yeah, kind of. And you know, after you complete a mission, they tell you whether or not you know you're uh, like high chaos or whatever. And, yeah. and and this one, you know, they actually have like a chart. Like you know, there's four points. It's like were you stealthy? Were you you know like aggressive? Hmm. Were you lethal? Uh, and they yeah, I've been just like straight up murdering everybody because. Um, they're supposed to implement like a, a new like chaos system, right? So you, you mentioned before that, you know, when you start killing a ton of people, there's more rats in the yeah, world or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So they have the, you know, something like that. Um, but it's, it's actually metered by like the NPCs that you kill. Like, uh, when you use that heart, right? So you can use that heart pointed at someone and it'll tell you like their deepest, darkest secret. Um, so there'll be characters so that they are write, like, you tell them that they write slash. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. And so those people you would kill, obviously. Yeah. Uh, Step but, one. But they're like divided into no, like, don't you know, kill slash writers. <laughs> they're divided into like uh, sympathetic kind of characters, like you know, good people. Uh, maybe they're guilty. Uh, maybe they're fucking serial killers. Um, and for the most part, everybody I've found has been like a you know a woman beater or a fucking serial killer. And it's like so I want to kill everybody. <laughs> okay. Uh, but that is supposed to like you know, uh, if I kill murderous people, it's supposed to affect my chaos level less. If I kill mm. somebody that's sympathetic, it affects it more. But I'm really not seeing the uh, um, the effects yeah. of, of such. Um, I, yeah, I don't know what the hell. In the first game, though, it wasn't. Was it something that you felt the effects of over the course of the game, or was it just like there are more rats, I guess? But then the ending was the different thing. More, the, the big difference. Uh, yeah, I want to say more rats, I guess. And then yeah, the ending, of course, was uh, yeah. yeah, straight up. Yeah, yeah. And that's I like I said, that's fine. Mm. Yeah, I, they they tell you they, there's a prompt. Play it how you want to play it. You know, and yeah, that's uh, that's how I've been playing it. And I I tried to go through and it's like. All right, should I murder this person? Should I not murder this person using that heart? And it's like, no, fuck it. I'm just, I'm just gonna kill everybody. And that's been really fun. Like I said, with the shadow powers, going back to those, uh, you can like, uh, uh, Emily's got a power that's uh, called Domino, where you can like link enemies mm, together, right. right? So if you kill one, they all mm. die. Uh, and then you can use that in combination with other powers, like you can use uh, your your uh, doppelganger uh, spell uh, that'll create a clone of you. They'll go and like try and kill Emily. Uh, the doppelganger will will kill one of them, and mm. then they all just fucking die. So I think at the end of the game, you're going to be overpowered as all hell. But that's all right. I saw a pretty good animated GIF of I think it's that doppelganger power of using that to break your fall, like air killing your doppelganger Holy as you're on shit. a long drop to land safely. That sounds pretty great. <laughs> which is a really fucked up concept. That is, yeah. I can't remember cool. who posted that, but yeah, I saw that last night. And I was uh, like, okay, that's a, that's a weird, dumb thing. That's cool. AI's been kind of hit or miss. Like, uh, uh, if I get into shit, like, if they see me, it's hard to get the fuck out. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember, I, fe- I felt that way about the first one, too. Yeah. Because, I, I, and a lot of this was just perfectionism, but I, I kept trying to go, like, super perfect stealthy, and then yeah. every time it would fall apart, it would fall apart so badly that I just wanted to, like... Yeah, luckily reload my save or quit. So I'm yeah. playing uh, with yeah. a controller, and they do have like a quick load and yeah. quick save like function you just on hit, the controller. Yeah, on the controller huh. as well. So, yeah. but right. you've got to go like hit start and then just like oh, hold the trigger, okay. yeah. quick save. Uh, Proper saves coming. I yeah. like it. Do you have different the, slots or just the one quick save? Just quick the load? one quick okay. save slot. That's still cool. Um, yeah, the, the AI, yeah, the hit or miss. I'm in one section right now um, where I can hack this like a big like watchtower turret. You know, it's got this spotlight on it, and if you know the spotlight shines on on somebody, it just shoots the shit out of them, right? Uh, so you can hack this thing to have it shoot some mm-hmm. of the guards. Um, and I've done that, and like one guard will walk into the spotlight, get fucked up. Everybody around starts hearing it. They're like, "What the hell's going on?" And they'll walk into the spotlight. It's a little ridiculous, uh, but fun nonetheless. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Overall, yeah, I'm super digging the game. I haven't gotten to the part where they have, you know, the, the time shifting stuff um, that we saw in some trailers earlier. I'm really, really looking forward to that. But yeah, I'm a, that seems I'm gonna see it through. Sounds sounds for sure. pretty promising overall. Very promising. Even, even if the, I think even if the story yeah. doesn't land, uh, the plot super well. I think yeah, it doesn't land very well. But uh, you know, like I said, the uh, the environment, um, environmental storytelling. I think wow, I, I'm really really in love with it. Yeah, th- those games have really cool like unique art design. Yeah, for sure, yeah, totally. I, th- I think stuff. it's I think it's way better than just a solid game. I think it's a pretty yeah. great game. All right, it's good to hear. Uh, All right, we're going to take our first break and then uh, come back and talk about more video games. (laughs) 
We gotta stay safe out there. Yeah? Yeah. What are we gonna do? How are we gonna protect ourselves? Well, we're gonna start by protecting our computers. Ooh, yeah, that's the most important thing in my life. Absolutely. So turn to a global leader in digital security, Avast. And send their cyber troops. Uh, yes, Avast installs tiny cyber troops Ooh. inside your computer. That sounds good. It keeps you safe yeah. online against cyber threats. Got, got little nano rifles. Yep. Pointed at the cyber bad guys. It's pointed at those cyber bad guys. You gotta bang them out, man. Yep. More than 400 million people trust Vast to keep uh, safe on the internet. And it'll protect you from like hackers, malware, spyware, ransomware. It's all badware. Badware. Malware. Okay. They call it. Ah, yeah. yeah that no, sounds, that sounds yeah. a little more intelligent. Yeah. Uh, cyber thieves are mm. trying to invade your privacy and steal your data. Cyber, Don't let them. Cyber crooks. Yeah. Keep the crooks away. You've got to whack those bad guys. Yeah. Call the cyber coppers. That's right. The cyber coppers at Avast. They've got a special game mode in there, so if you're playing video games or something, it'll disable all the interruptions or notifications. It doesn't slow down your computer to do what it's doing. I frequently am playing video games, so that's good to hear. Okay, well, this will uh, utilize uh, those valuable CPU cycles for what you need to do and keep performance up while it's off in the background doing its thing. And it can do that thing on phones. It can do that thing on laptops. It can even do it on a Mac. I got all those things. It's got a small file size, and you can find out more about it over at avast.com. That's A-V-A-S-T dot com. That sounds cyber cool. Stay cyber cool this cyber summer. Even though it's, it's winter in the real world, it's, it's okay. summer inside. It's cyber summer. All right, Dan. Yes. I know you've been waiting for this. What am I waiting for? God Eater Minute. Tell me about no. it. No, there's no God Eater nope. Minute. Sorry. Those days are gone. Did v you finish Video it? games? No, not yet. Mm. Tell me about Pocket Monsters. Oh, uh, the Pokemon. Uh, yeah, I'm playing uh, Pokemon Moon. Okay. Uh, there's Pokemon Sun and mm. Moon. Why'd you pick Moon? Uh, the thing on the front looked cooler. Okay. Yeah. The moon is cooler than the sun. Which Pokemon did you choose at the beginning Literally. of the game? The owl with the leafy bow tie. Poplio is great. I like Poplio. Yeah. I want a Poplio. It will join my team. But you once didn't I get start one in the wild, a Poplio as your homie. No, wow. They all seem really cool. Um, but that owl side. has a bow tie. Although my owl has evolved and now it's this like Jared Leto adolescent owl. Uh, it's got this uh, like swoopy hair thing going okay. over. Like skinny he's, tie. And... It's like this like emo owl thing going on that I I'm not a fan of. I wish I could revert back to the uh, the first owl. Um, any pounded owl liner? bee or whatever. To... Yeah, that's a thing, right? See, I, I've never actually... Okay, the only Pokemon games I've beat are Pokemon Snap and all of the mini games and the Pokemon Stadium games. Okay. Uh, okay. So the important ones. Yeah, you know? yeah. Baseline Pokemon, yeah. Yeah, like, you know, my aversion to JRPGs growing up led to me not really playing those games. Mm -hmm. But uh, I gave X a try. I put like 10 or 12 hours into X. Yeah. I liked it. It was cool. Um, but I'm liking this a lot more. It seems like it's got some like real quality of life improvements. Okay. Hmm. Uh, so let's say you've used this poison type of Pokemon against this flying type of Pokemon, and you know this thing's really effective or this is not. Super effective. Anytime you use, like you see that in the wild or whatever, mm -hmm. it'll remind you like, oh, this move is not very effective. This move is super effective. So you don't have to memorize all yeah, these different that's cool. things. Yeah. And like if you want to use a Pokeball to catch a, uh, a Pokemon, you can just hit Y to go right to your Pokeballs instead of having to do whatever you had to do in the previous ones. Yeah. You know, I, I don't have the biggest frame of reference, being very new to the series, but this seems very approachable. Mm -hmm. There's way less stuff that I'm confused about than even I was with X. And uh, it, it's been really fun. I'm probably like eight hours into it now. Um, yeah. That's cool. I, I wish I could get back into Pokemon, I, but because I, I played Red and really liked it. Hmm. When it, all that stuff first happened, I was mm -hmm. like, man, this is fucking cool. Was that, that was literally the first yeah, generation. Yeah, Red yeah, and blue, yeah. yeah. You know, and... and then, like, when Gold, Silver came out, like, eh, this is still cool, but I don't know that I want it. And I ended up not finishing that one, I think. And then from there, it was just like, all right, whatever. I just don't have time or that much interest anymore. But You can only memorize so I, many. I, yeah. I mean, I, I always love the concept. Sure. Uh, but. It's just really smartly put together. Like, mm -hmm. uh, even, like, trading Pokemon or, or battling, like, locally with other players. Yeah. You both just pick this thing from the menu, and you hold your thumb anywhere on the bottom screen. And it just recognizes if anyone around is currently holding their thumb on the screen. Okay. Pairs you up with them, then you can fight or trade or whatever. Huh. Uh, it's just been really seamless and easy to do. Yeah. So there's... Uh, They've had like 20 games to try and work that out. Yeah, so, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good. There's just a lot going on in that game. Does it have feel... Amiibo support? I have not seen any Amiibo okay. mentions. Seriously? No. Weird. Uh, yeah, I don't think you there's think. Amiibo stuff. <laughs> hmm. Don't think so. Good job, Nintendo. <laughs> 
Well, it's Game Freak. It seems to be like Nintendo uh, developed games yeah. are the ones that go hard on the Amiibo stuff. Mm. So you're coming hot off of like a Yokai Watch, which is you know, mm-hmm. definitely has its similarities. Are you enjoying this as much, or I yeah, like Yokai Watch, I never played all the way through. Sure, um, you know, I kind of fell off with that. It's it's really cool, um, but I feel like this is getting its hooks in more. Like the more I play this, the more I want to keep playing and like learning all these different systems and everything and, and yep. catching new Pokemon and evolving and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, or, you know, Yokai, like, you know, it, it's much more, it, it's much simpler, like the battle system and everything. It feels like there's more going on with assembling a party and, and battling and, and Pokemon. Okay. Wow. So, uh, yeah, big thumbs up on what I've played so far. So uh, I can cool. see myself uh, playing through this one for mm. the first time. Rad, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good stuff. Also beat uh, Gears 4. That's yeah. great. Um, Which what played on? Hardcore? Yes, hardcore okay. split screen, which I beat it uh, in co-op, and I saw a new like rare achievement thing pop up, which I'd never seen before. It's like a diamond. Yeah, they, they track that? rarity now. So yeah, the oh. the hol- they're calling it the holiday update. Is that I think uh, is the name for the new? That sounds right. Yeah, they rolled yeah. out the the new dashboard update over the weekend. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, I had never uh, seen that before. It's and been, that stuff's shows been in, up. in the preview program for a long time. So yeah, but now they they show rarity similar to Sony's rarity stuff. So it's not like programmed in by the coalition. It's not like oh here's no, no, a no, diamond that's one. A, that's, no, that's just a. Oh, I didn't know they had symbols associated with. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it's like a spinning diamond. It made it feel very special. Yeah, no, that's just that's just real time data based on how many people have it. Versus yeah. how many and they, they show those percentages oh. when you go to the achievements app and look and stuff like that. That that official I know so many people don't give a shit about achievements, but that officially makes Xbox achievements better than PS4 trophies now. Because it used to be PS4 trophies have always had this rarity thing, which right. is an awesome like yeah. social indicator of how things go. Yep. In the community, but then yeah. Xbox has always had this internal like yep. second level tracking of like steps taken. Right. Like those stuff those like those meters on like any achievement that requires you to do X of a thing. Yeah. So just having those progress cool. meters is so awesome. Oh, right. yeah. Now I really wish that Sony had that stuff. But yeah, yeah. you know, maybe they'll steal it back. I, 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 I care about achievements more than most people. I think. <laughs> Uh, yeah. And clubs are out now, too. Yeah, they are. We need to talk about the Giant Bomb official club at some oh, point yeah. and get that thing started. Uh, uh, it is started. It's. I think there's something wrong with it. Yeah. We're uh, going to we're have to talk. I think we're going to have to contact my... Well, there's another one, though. There is. Which yeah, you may, reserved two ahead yeah, of time. And, and one of them didn't work. Yeah. So we got to figure out. The the one that didn't work is, the, I think, the one that'll be the actual official one. Yeah. I don't if, know. if Microsoft can fix it. Yeah. We'll I'll have people start joining. The other one is official classic, right? Yeah. I don't know if people have started joining that I one in so. mass yet. I have no idea. I think yeah. so. Yeah. Um, anyway. All, all I know is that I got about 18,000 club invites over the weekend. Yeah. Just oh. watching TV and stuff. Oh, yeah. I, uh, I turned all my notifications yeah. off for that stuff. So here. Uh, yeah, only thing I'll say about Gears is that, uh, I loved pretty much all of it, except for, like, the last bit, kind of, it didn't end with a bang to me, like, the yeah, last it, it sequence. There, there's a final boss fight that doesn't seem like the end of the game, Not and it all. seems like you're heading into a, a real final boss fight, but then that's just a cutscene that is, in fact, the end of the game. Ah. Yeah, you kind of realize after like, you kill oh, the thing, that like, is oh, never, this is gonna be credit soon, isn't it? That is yeah. never a good feeling when yeah. a game ends before you feel like it should end. Yeah. But, I mean, the rest of it, it it's super solid the yeah. whole way through, and we we did some Horde on the site uh, last week, Right, and yeah. I, I've been doing some Horde uh, in my own time, too. It's great. Like just mm-hmm. matchmaking? Uh, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. me and Bianca will uh, matchmake with some people, and uh, that's, you know, people will drop out and stuff. But yeah. overall, it's been pretty good. Cool. Um, so yeah, that game's great. And then other than that, just the usual Titanfall and, and the like. Cool. Mm-hmm. Cool. Uh, Drew. Brad. Are good? Yeah. What are you playing? What are you playing? Spreadsheets. Ooh. Specifically, mm-hmm. motorsport flavor. Oh wow! Yeah. I thought he was going to say Doom, and then he said Spreadsheets, which is kind of the opposite mm. of Doom. It's pre- yeah. yeah, it's very, very different. Uh, actually, Motorsport Manager on the PC mm. uh, is not too spreadsheet heavy. We played it a little bit on uh, UPF, and it's actually got like graphics and stuff. Yeah, it has a nice look to yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 cool. It's like um, when you actually get to the race part, it looks all tilt shifted. Uh, the cars look really tiny. Yeah, and some little micro machine looking mm-hmm. cars driving around the yeah. and stuff. Yeah, and there's also I mean I I don't know if other management games like f- Football Manager is like a huge one. I don't know if these also have visual representations, but I I, I like the the cut of this one. People love to manage. They do. Um. So yeah, it. you're yeah. you you don't. <laughs> no. I'm Jeff, terrible. you manage a website. I'm terrible at it. Do you like NFL head coach? No. No. Absolutely not. I didn't like that yeah. either. Uh. So anyway, you are managing a racing team, a la a Formula One team. Uh. They don't come out and say it, but it's mm. all open wheel racing, and there's like different levels that you can do. Uh, with different complexity, but like this used to be an iOS game. Uh, that I think came oh, wow. out in like 2014 or something. Um, this goes way more complex, um, but I think retains the usability and the interface throughout. So there's a lot of stuff going on, but you, 
at least I didn't ever feel like uh, I didn't know what I was looking at. So um, you can drill down as far uh, as like researching different parts to put into your car that will make one car move go better than another car and it's all like dice rolls in the end you're not actually controlling the car going around the track sure. you're just you're calling all right i'm putting this driver in this car with these parts and then i'm pitting at this time and putting on these tires and telling him to push this hard and, and just letting him go right and letting him go but you can you can uh, like micromanage <laughs> stuff mid race as well like when they pit and exactly and, and oh, when okay. they when they try to pass and when they kind of play it safe and huh. stuff too so right. it's kind of yeah, it, it looked you, like a lot. Yeah, it looked like there was a lot going on. Yeah, so there's even more behind that. Mm. So I I got last night to practice and qualifying, which they fully render those as well, and yes. they each have a purpose. Like practice allows you to test out race setups, and you can dial in your tire camber and your suspension and everything, Jesus. and then say, all right, run this setup, and then they go and do a lap, and they say like, oh, I didn't like it, or I did like it, and then you can use that setup then in qualifying. Depending on how well you do in that is where you start the race. Uh, but then between races, that's when you develop parts and stuff. And they mm. even, I like the fact that they model uh, not just like all the, they they take the thinking of um, a racing team and model that, not necessarily what, <laughs> what the rules say, but how people actually use it. So mm. for example, um, you can there's a there's like an option in your when you create a new part to add risk to it so your part is somewhat illegal and it may be found out by the <laughs> oh wow uh the judges um but there's like uh, a performance advantage mm -hmm. so you're it's it's all it, it, basically yeah. it's all dice rolls that's cool but they they don't like it's not strictly to the to the uh, letter of the law. Hmm. They allow you um, a little leeway there. They so kind of frown on like saw blades on the side of your car. Right, a lot yeah, of I risk. I haven't seen that. that yet. Yeah, you put that in as like eighty percent risk. They're okay. going to notice. Yeah, um, but yeah, that that game is intense. Uh, I'm nowhere near. <laughs> I have a full grasp on it, but um, another game I, I intense just... in, in like how much they throw at you or how much how deep it goes. Gotcha. Uh, and they seem dense. I, I don't actually know if you can choose not to engage with that stuff. Like I think, yeah. So a lot of racing games, like Dirt, for example, you can drill down into your into your you know camber angle and your uh, gear ratios and whatever if you want. If to. you want, yeah. you don't really need to. In this game, I feel like you might need to. Okay. I mean, management right there in the name. Yeah. Yeah. If you're gonna play this game, you better fucking manage. Yeah. <laughs> but it's it seems really well made, and um, I, I it's one of those games that. Uh, time can just slip away. Yeah. Um, and then another yeah. game I've only just dipped my toes into is the beta for Planet Coaster. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. I yeah. tried playing a little bit of that yeah. over the weekend and diving into that thing head first like, without going through all their tutorial videos seemed like a bad way to go. Yeah, that's what I did. Mm. Yeah. Um, and there's there's a lot to that game too. Yeah. It's basically Roller Coaster Tycoon, I think from. The people who made it yeah, I'm pulling it up right now. Yeah. It's yeah. from Frontier. Frontier it, Development. Yeah. yeah, it looks nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it looks really, really good. But yeah, that's yeah. Um, I had and, a, I had a bad time with it in the okay. middle of my extra live stream. Wow, this was like you go first to, person. Uh, I did once. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Does that have VR support? I don't think it does. That, mm. that, that looks really good. Yeah. yeah, it's a nice looking game. Yeah. Um. Uh, but but it looked like it was it looked like it was forcing me to put in a priority line as well as a regular line like the the idea being like you know like pass holders or something like that would be able to skip the line maximize and profits I am, I am fundamentally against the concept <laughs> of really? like wow. fast pass huh. like line skipping <laughs> shit at, at amusement parks yeah so, I think I could so get when behind it, that when it seemed like it was forcing me to put one in I wanted to uninstall the <laughs> game and moral opposition that's just what I did after we mm. stopped playing it. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it looked nice though. Yeah. That Did game... they give you like a pre-generated uh, park to play with? Can you just uh, go into sandbox? Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah, and it's cool. Okay. Like, uh, so I, I yeah, I just loaded up there. Um, I didn't look at any of the tutorials. I was just poking around, and I loaded up their park. And you can by clicking on a ride, like it'll notify you, like, hey, this ride, people are saying that the line is too long. Um, uh, so it kind of directs you in that way. But you can click on a ride and see uh, stats about it. 
um, not only like the speed that it goes at and the G's and the nausea that it'll induce, nice. but like how much, um, I forget what they call it, not adornment, but like uh, flare essentially. Mm -hmm. And okay. then you can add, so like if you, uh, like you're, the flare of your line is not enough. So I put some palm trees next to them and then it increased by a couple percent. Oh, and then gotcha. like those little water mm -hmm. spouts that fly up. Yeah. So now people love waiting in line. Yeah. Like, and they love these, it. Look at these trees. Yeah. It was a great time. So I, I feel like the 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 magic of the original roller coaster tycoon was was having like in, increasing aspects like that, but also at the same time making it look aesthetically pleasing or right. like in in like making sure that your park was uh the way that you wanted it to look while also uh Increasing happy. those numbers, mm -hmm. yeah. um, and I feel like that there's a I I felt that in uh, in what little I played of Planet yeah. Coaster. So, do you ever, hmm. do you play? Did you ever play any Railroad Tycoon? You ever get into not that? Railroad? No. Okay, there's a new game out now that looks like it's similar to some of those games, hmm. and I okay. don't, the name escapes me. But all right, I, I want to uh, I want to give that a look at some point. Man. Yeah, I tried to find a speed slider to turn all the way up to make the coasters fly off the track sure. which yeah. you could do in roller coaster tycoon and i couldn't find it mm. so maybe it's that's a tutorial a somewhere yeah. i assume there's a way to share parks and stuff with like a community i don't you know you create right? a character and stuff at the front of that thing and okay. it looks like you can visit other people's parks i would, so, I would assume yeah. so um yeah i want to share that shit but yeah you like you you create a character and then it just shows you a globe and then theoretically i think your steam friends would show on that globe gotcha hmm. um mm. but yeah True, how's your Final Fantasy VI going? Yeah, oh, that's pretty good. Is yeah, it? you still going? Yeah, I'm still going. Awesome. I just got to the Phantom Train. Oh, okay, yeah, you're, shit, you're getting in there. Yeah, that's, you're making some like progress. Three and a half hours in, or something? dude. Do you have do you have spin in your party right now? Uh, yeah. Yes. You can yeah. suplex that train. Yeah. Dude, what? don't fucking spoil that for him. Well, I've seen that screenshot. That's pretty yeah? cool. Yeah. yeah. All right. Oh. Did you not fight it? No, okay. I haven't fought a train oh, yet. I'm sorry. I'm. He riding will. on it. He will, yeah. Fucking old SNES Final Fantasy has had a good run of just letting you fight real weird shit. Yeah. Like the demon wall. Mm, right. Mm, oh, fuck that thing. Yeah. You fight a wall, you fight a train. Giant purple octopus. I was talking about Earthbound this weekend. Uh, you can like fight scalding cups of coffee and mm, stuff in that, yeah. right? Really weird stuff. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I should play that game. Dan, you might yeah. like Earthbound. I like the idea of it. I played a few hours of it, and then the battle system kind of turned me off. Oh, okay. um, but I like everything surrounding that game. Like It seems to have a really good sense I, of humor. I tried to play Earthbound relatively recently and just... Ugh. Yeah? Yeah, but I, I never really played it when it was new, hmm. so it was kind of my first time trying to check it out, and it didn't it didn't do anything for me. Huh. I am delighted to hear you're still playing that game. Yeah. Same. It's great. You I should, uh, should talk in greater depth okay. at some point. It's my game of micro, holding strong. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. That's good stuff. Uh, Can you do blitz attacks relatively easily with your micro? Blitz attacks. Uh, are those like the ones where you do the button presses? Button yeah. Inputs? yeah, that's, that's all working out. Okay, yeah. and they don't prompt. There are no button prompts for that, right? Don't you have to just memorize the he, he, combinations? He told me one once. <laughs> okay, and that's it. Are they yeah. like QTEs? No. Well, that's what I'm oh, saying. There's no. nothing like on QTEs screen without no prompts. Yeah, basically? like you have to yeah. just hit. It's just a sequence of face buttons. Yeah, right? the only one I know is left, right, left, and then A. Yeah, they've got orbital, which is like a fireball motion. This is, it's actually fighting game motions. Yeah, it's huh. like a three quarter circle one. Yeah. Wow. Anyway, a lot of cool abilities in that game. Yeah. Um. All right, let's move into the news for the week. The headlines of the video game industry. Yeah. Let's say it's the official news music, which means I can now move on and tell you that we have more Nintendo Switch news this week. Oh, lay it on me. Uh, once again, courtesy of Let's Play Video Games. Uh, I, I may have misattributed some information last week by trying to pull information from Twitter feeds. Yeah. So I'm going to stick to their official news role for now, just so we know it's official newsy news. All right. Um, they've got information out of game, the UK retailer, about pricing. Oh. Yeah. I don't know if you guys saw this or not. No, I did not. Uh, so yeah, they this came from two sources, one that they have used previously, another which is new, but that they say they have vetted extensively. Uh, who says there will be two SKUs for the Switch. Okay. Uh, a basic SKU. Uh, so, yeah, the, the, the actual numbers they have are all in, in British pounds, but they've done the conversion. So the, the basic SKU will be 200 pounds, uh, and then they will have a more deluxe huh. SKU. It basically sounds like the Wii, or I'm sorry, the Wii U. Is it 8 gigabytes? I don't know. I don't. So yeah, that's those oh, are so they, they don't they don't have storage. The, the, those what's are, actually different. Those are the differences huh. in in vague terms. The so yeah, the basic the basic package is just the system for two hundred pounds, and then for two fifty, 
Uh, huh. it'll, be, it'll be a system with more internal storage and a packed-in game. What is okay? Two hundred pounds, like the pounds really so, weak, so right? The and so they another part of this information or this report is that they are hearing the system will be region-free. Oh, uh, and thus the prices will be directly equivalent across regions, which would put that at two fifty and three hundred. God damn. Okay. Okay. Here. Sure. Uh, which is cheaper than Wii U was when it came out. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, by fifty bucks. Mm-hmm. Uh, cool. I'm in. I was a little dismayed at the idea of having to pick how much storage you want, but then uh, the same site has also reported that there will be an SD card slot. Oh. Uh, hmm. That will take up to 128 gig SD cards. Interesting. So that's right. probably fine if you want to go for the cheaper option, assuming you don't want the game that's packed in. Hmm. Right. I thought they were scared of, as hell of external storage, but uh, they've put SD slots on everything so yeah, far. Yeah, everything they put out has happened. Well, I know. Every single one has led to <laughs> exactly. some fucking magic yep. yeah. happening with some of those platforms. So. Um, um, I wonder if Mario is the pack-in. They, so, yeah, this report says they have heard what the pack-in game is. Is it Mario? They, no, they don't, they're not oh. saying. They are not confident enough in the information as yet oh. to say what it is. And probably. probably launching with a new Mario game would be awesome. Probably. They haven't done that since 64. Or Zelda. I mean, well, there's, like, there's the new you Mario to, Brothers Wii U Even then, or you whatever. had to buy Mario 64 yeah. externally. That is true. I mean, just like a launch with a Mario remember, game. Remember when they dropped the price on the N64? Yeah. Like, like right before Mario's release, they're like, hey, like, by the they, way. They dropped it by 50 bucks, like, right before launch. Yeah. Like, who does that? Yeah, yeah. yeah was weird, it originally but... 250 and it went down to 200? Uh, I don't maybe, remember. Maybe, or it might have been 300 to 250. I forget. Huh. I th- yeah, I think it's that one. Yeah. And then was it, like Toys R Us Canada put up a page that had pricing on it. Oh, I haven't seen that. Oh, really? That I saw yesterday that I th- want to say it was like three twenty nine dollars Canadian. In your which experience. Seems to line up with this. I'm not yeah. sure. How trustworthy are these pre price leaks? Because sometimes like retailers will just, uh, like we'll see. Oh, you, oh they, they put up. If they're putting it on a site and not system. immediately taking it down, then you look at it and go like, that might just be their best yeah. estimate. Right. Or, that's, that's the same as listing December 31st as a release date. Right. Right. Yeah. Because uh, they all put in place like, hey, this is, you know, you, if you pre-order now and the price goes down, then you'll get whatever the lowest price is. You yeah. Know, or, or, or something like that. Oh, how like generous that. of so, them. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, well, of course, naturally. Um, so it, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, publicly listed prices like this you, you are hard to take seriously. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So like the Toys R Us thing, I looked at it and went like, eh, you know, it doesn't really mean anything. Like it could be right, we don't know. Like this this other story, if they're sourcing it from retailers and they trust their sources yep. and they've had pretty accurate stuff on this in the past, yes, uh, that's probably a little more uh, easy to believe. I think they, they uh, the, from, from what I remember, they and Eurogamer are the two sources that all of the credible information pretty much has come out of on this stuff. Right, yeah. Um, so I'm inclined to think it's pretty trustworthy. Uh, they mentioned the uh, the Pro Controller. They use the phrase Pro Controller. I think I don't Nintendo know if that's used official. Did they, they actually come out yeah. and call it that? Yeah. Uh, they mentioned that will be 40 pounds. They don't give a direct conversion there, but probably you could see, like, what, 60? That's, that's what controllers cost nowadays. On that. So It would be nice factor uh, that in for that thing to be region free. I yeah, think that would yeah. be uh, that'd be cool. I think it would maybe lead to a case where Nintendo is better about localizing its games and yeah. aiming for worldwide releases mm-hmm. and stuff like that, which I think would be a cool place for them to be. Well, what do you mean by better? Because I mean, I mean, I might push some games back overall if they want to do worldwide launches for everything. But I, I think you know, I mean, they, well, I'm saying there's there's not a lot that they're not already bringing over, right? Yeah, but if they're bringing it all over at the same time, oh, you mean you mean better about like also third party games? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. specifically sure. like third party sure. games that are not going to get brought over because they're too esoteric yes, or something yes, like that. Yes. Like you know, um, <laughs> that'd be nice to just be able to have the option to play some of that stuff if you wanted to. Yep. Uh, there's no reason to region lock your system. They should, uh, they don't should. do it. Yeah, don't do it. Um, uh, that's, that's, that sounds pretty promising to me. Yeah. yeah. That's, that is maybe cheaper than I would have expected by 50 bucks. Yeah, mm. same here. Um, yeah, I'm totally yeah. in. Uh, if that's the case. Yeah. So there you have it. That's what I got for you. Cool. Yeah, cool. That that seems to line up. That uh, made, that's a sensible price. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we're less than, what, two months away from uh, the full like game lineup announcement. It's early January, Roughly, right? right around two months, yeah. I mean, did they say that was going to be a like, full game lineup announcement? I mean, I, they, no, they, they said they, they they games said, in we, development. They, they yeah, said the phrasing was sort of, yeah, like we'll stuff. discuss games yeah. in development or something like I, that. I'm yeah. sure I'll get the answer to my Mario question. Uh, Probably. Yeah. Probably. Uh, Jeff, you sent me this link to a thread on NeoGAF. Mm-hmm. 
digging into the uh, release notes for the latest version of the Unreal Engine. Yeah. Hmm. Which, uh, without descending into a lot of technical minutia, seems to imply that maybe you're going to be able to start changing your PSN name soon. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's some stuff in here that seems to... Uh, I mean, you probably have the the actual like terms in front of you. I do, but it, yeah, it seems so. like it seems like that that Sony is maybe changing how they want developers to look up your name yeah. on PSN uh, and the oh, the okay. fields that it is storing yeah. and fields that it is pulling from for that sort of stuff. Yeah. It's like, so, how does this tie into the Unreal Engine? So, so the uh, the release notes for Unreal are talking about how it. I mean, I could read the actual language. Refactored the PlayStation Four online subsystem engine plugin, which is part of the yeah. Unreal Engine, I'm guessing, uh, to support PlayStation Four SDK version. Blah blah blah. Deprecated the use of SCENP online ID, replacing it with SCENP account ID as per Sony's recommendation. Mm. There's a bunch of other stuff in there, but that seems to be the crucial thing here is that they have... Yeah, without without going too far down the rabbit hole on this stuff, uh, changing name on PSN is hard for a reason uh, because of some of the things they did to build that stuff in the first place. So Bad bad decisions uh, that were made eight, ten years ago. So Mm -hmm. hearing that the solution seems to be we're creating a new field in our data table or something. And this is where the name is stored. Now that says to me that they have done what I always thought was the only way they could solve this problem was mm-hmm. to just create a new field. Yeah. Unless you want copy to- everyone's name over here yeah. and then build that field in such a way that it can be changed. Yeah. Unless, uh, unless you want to break all legacy support for exactly, that stuff, you exactly. kind of have to just build on top of it. So when, when, and if they do roll out the ability to change names, I will be curious very curious to see if any of that works on older platforms mm-hmm. oh. or if that's just a PS4 only thing uh, where you, Hey, you can change your name here, but mm. it's still going to be this. Yeah. I mean, if, if, if the problem is what we think we know that it is, then that will not be the case. Uh, but, but then again, right. who cares about changing their name on the PS3? At the I, point? Yeah. Like, that's, I, that, I, I, that ship is rapidly sailing. Right. Uh, it seems, it seems largely like what steam does to me. Yeah. Where you have, you have a fixed account name that you sign in. With right, and then you never have a, change. a fixed account ID that is a string of numbers right. that also doesn't change. Right, but you can change your display name yeah. to whatever you want. And then, you know, Sony has its real name fields and stuff like yeah. that, and you can mm-hmm. obviously put whatever you want in there. Yeah. So they, they already have a precedent in their setup for real names. Sure. Or, or for, for changeable names. Yes. So presumably this will... I bet that they announced this at PSX. This seems like oh, the, yeah. the type of... Right, that's coming up. That is the type of like, hey, only our most ardent fans yep. care about this thing at all. That is the perfect <laughs> level of <laughs> sure. announcement for yeah. PSX. It's people, like TwitchCon announcing new emotes. Yes. Exactly. People yeah, people yeah. watching the PSX uh, keynote or whatever will be super stoked. Yes. Yeah. This. That, I bet that, that like th- this says to me that this is... If it's in the SDK now, then... Well, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it would take time for the games to get out there and support it. Like, who knows what actually has to change. Yeah. Is it early December games? for PSX? Yeah. Yeah. PSX, like that's Anaheim this year? Anaheim. Yeah. First yeah. weekend in December, something okay. like that. Cool. Uh, I could see that being announced there yeah. if, if they're totally. actually going to go through with this. Uh, I know a lot of people that would be very happy about that. Sure. Who, yeah. who registered I, really dumb PSN names I wish names that I could ago. merge accounts. Huh. Uh, because I have multiple accounts on both platforms that have digital purchases associated mm. with them. I wish that How I could just happen? combine those. Merge well, trophies at some point, I had a name that had a website name in it, and I didn't work for that <laughs> oh, website right. anymore. So uh, I'm like, sure. fuck that. <laughs> yeah. So I had to create another new a new name. Yeah. Uh, and well, that's why you gotta, and because I didn't fucking learn anything, right. I went and that's, named that's it after I'm a saying. website. You gotta, this is why you got to use a universal name. You're, yes. Yes. Something you could something you could live with. Someday when they come make, hell or high water. the ability to change it, then this problem will be... Nolan Void. But. Rain rain or shine. Yeah. You got a username that works for you. That's a great PSN name, by the way. What's that? Rain or Shine. Yeah. yeah. Like Jim Rainer. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's that's gotta not, be taken. Rain or Shine Jr. It's, it's about to be, if not already. Um in other Sony news. Uh I sort of hesitated to include this, but I think it's probably worth talking about. Jeff, you got a PS4 Pro. I did. Yeah, I, I have one on a FedEx truck somewhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, Digital Foundry posted a report Thursday or Friday last week. So basically, like the press got their units a, a good number of days ahead of yeah, uh, and then it the launched on Thursday. Launch date, which was last Thursday, and then they have started posting benchmarks and stuff. I'm of two minds on this because on the one hand, it's like a very minor discrepancy. It's not a huge deal, but on the other hand, what it implies about the story of the PS4 Pro is. Mm. Terrible? Yeah, sure. Uh, but they've got a handful of games they've been testing on the PS4 Pro that actually run worse <laughs> at 1080p on the Pro than they do on the regular system. And 
tell, what does run worse mean? So in in most cases, or... in most cases, the games they call out here are uh, Skyrim Special Edition, Last of Us Remastered, uh, Deus Ex: Human Revolution seems to be the big offender. Uh, most of these, it's like a handful of frames per second in, mm. in isolated cases or something like that. Yeah. Uh, like they say, Skyrim is mostly fine, except certain areas you'll, it'll be worse. Mm. Uh, Deus Ex sounds like it's the real offender where you're seeing like massive, well, massive meaning like five, 10 frames per second. Okay. Uh, in a game that runs at 30, that's, right. <laughs> that's a not, lot of frames. That's not yeah. great. And you know, like Last of Us Remastered runs at 60 already. So you're dropping a few frames off of that. It's mm. not a huge deal. I mean, you know, th this is a site that specializes in pixel counting and like frame timing and totally. like really esoteric uh, minor data points. But the story of a console right. that costs more than the original console has way faster hardware in it and is putting out games at launch that run worse. Yeah. Like you can't get around the narrative of that. And that's the stuff that they, you know, in the, in the documents we saw seemed like one of the things that they were very ardent yes. about. Like, hey, you will not ship a game that runs worse. Yeah. They, they mentioned uh, yeah, the, 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 the TRC or whatever. So I wonder if this is a case where this stuff gets fixed. I hope so. I mean, like all it takes, all like it would take is a rev situation right. where it's like, hey, the thing's launching. Like you, you're not done polishing your shit up. Right. But that's the that's that is the best case scenario and like pretty acceptable even though it kind of is a bummer for people who bought it at launch. Yeah, like yeah. If, if in a week or two all these games get patched to at least bring them up parity, then fine. Like that's not... I would have said the same thing about PlayStation VR and there's been yeah. no patch work done there at all. Yeah. Just don't install Halo 3 to your hard drive and you'll be fine. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. That was a weird one. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of it's kind of stuff like that, but there's no way to opt out of this, you know? Like if you're on a 1080p, t a 1080p TV with a pro... Like you're stuck with whatever decisions Opt they made. Opt out of it by going to well, the TV store. Okay. Yeah, no, totally. Like it's, we have a console for you. What, it's called the PlayStation Four. Right, that's what I mean. Like it's, I feel like that the PlayStation Four Pro would benefit in all cases by some light on the system or something that was on the menus for games or something that was in some in the XMB somewhere that just said pro mode enabled right told like, like told just, you what it was doing or yeah if it told yeah. you what it was doing or just let you know like yes it is working as intended right because yeah. i've been playing games on a pro for a couple of weeks now like yeah. reviewing watchdogs and i've played watchdogs on a regular ps4 and on a pro can't tell the difference there may not be a difference mm. like, at 1080 there may not be a difference yeah, yeah exactly and you, you, you don't know, know what each individual like game we, did. we've got that 4k tv we should probably hook a ps4 pro up to it directly and, into it and see how that shit looks it, it uh, seems like in, in all cases of these games that they're calling out here what they're doing is just taking the pro mode and scaling it down to right. 1080 so yeah. you're like other than the super sampling you're kind of not getting any benefits at all yeah and you're losing performance. So it's kind of the it's worst. like a higher resolution or a crisper image quality right. at the expense right. of frame rate. But which you know, I they, would rather have the frame rate. Totally, totally. Ten and, times out of ten. And and to their credit, like they talk about like Battlefield One, Titanfall, uh, Tomb Raider. Like there are a bunch of games at this launch that did the work and actually are, yeah, like across the board better at every resolution on a pro. Right. Uh, and and if it's better, and yeah, I, I think that's a subjective thing of as to like, is it better enough to right. matter? Because uh, like I said, I, I played Titanfall a lot on both and it, I barely noticed. Yeah, it. obviously. Like, I, you know, like so a game like Titanfall looks pretty damn good as it is. Yes. So it's kind of hard to tell the difference. But like, like Tomb Raider was like a really cool example of like, they put some work into that mm. uh, to give you a bunch of options about how to use that extra power. But, and I've never played Hitman on a regular PS4, but I played that on a pro. Yeah. And, uh, that was a load time. Yeah, it, the load time seemed fine. That's okay. like the the major complaint I heard about that PS4 yeah. version. People was. people are reporting better load times yeah. on the Pro, which is a nice bonus. Um, Did make me think about getting an SSD after seeing mm -hmm. some story about Bloodborne load times being way yeah. lower, huh. but th that's so expensive right now. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know that I'm, I don't know that I want to do that. Yeah, I, you know, I'm I'm sure this stuff will get better over time. Like the more time developers have with this thing, like you know, all the stories you were hearing was this kind of got dropped on a bunch of developers yeah, like six yeah. eight months ago, and sure. they just had to scramble to meet the deadlines and get support in at all. Uh, so I'm sure games coming out in the future will handle this stuff a lot more robustly. But we'll it's see. Yeah. Kind of not a great look at launch. No, like, no, I, no definitely like, not. I, I went and ordered that thing, and then like the next day <laughs> saw this story going around, and I was like, man, no, I don't know. I just realized I've seen a lot of tweets from people saying they're doing the transfer from their old PS4 to the Pro. Yep. If I'm not going to be able to do that, I've got my PS4, but I'm selling it before I leave here. You can do backup. And I'm getting... Okay. There's a USB backup utility in that thing. But even if I don't do that, like, should cloud-based stuff be fine? Like, yeah, it's anything all tied to my library. Yeah. I mean, saves. Like, There's you, nothing... If you want to re-download everything, you can do that 100%. The one, okay. The, okay. the one and only thing that it's worth trying to backup at this point on a PS4 is PT. 
Like that's I do have that. That's so, so then so you want to back up your PS4 is a USB to utility thing because you can't re-download it. Okay. Um, you want to make sure that you deactivate that console. As yes. Well. Make sure you deactivate. Oh, it's total factory your... default and all that stuff. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You already um, wiped it. I'm going to. Okay, but you haven't yet. No. Okay. You should do that before you wipe it. I yeah. need. Okay. What I need to do is take out my two terabyte, put in the 500 gigabyte. No, first right. you need to back up what's on that two terabyte. Okay, so I'm doing the USB backup yes. with the two terabyte. Yeah. Okay, and then I take it out. Also, and then, you, you will need a drive at least as big as the amount of data on that two terabyte. So you will need a two terabyte drive. To so back what up I your, what your I plan to do because I, I what I plan to do because I don't have like a huge USB hard drive. <laughs> or to delete use. everything yeah. but PT. That's, that's it. Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. Delete all the games that aren't PT and just back up like my save data okay. and PT onto a USB drive. And then I know you have to format a hard drive when you put it back in. So when I'm putting the original 500 gigabyte back in, will it prompt me once no. I put it in the place? How there's, do I format it? Defect, this boot is, up in safe mode this is and there's a format. Super arcane. Yeah. So you need to go on to a PC. You need to go to the no. PlayStation website and download the latest oh, firmware boy. and put <laughs> it on a USB stick. Okay. Do you? Boot the PS4 yes. by holding the power button down until it beeps a second time. Okay. Uh, yeah. And then you'll get that weird system level looking menu where there's an option for like, right. for like reinitialize hard drive yeah. or something like that. So the important thing is back up PT before. Yeah. I take out anything. Yes. Okay. But since that P since that hard drive is coming out of a PS4, out of that PS4, he might be able to just put it back in and have it go. It doesn't work in other systems. There's some... No, he's putting it back in the same system it came out of. Oh, the old 500. Yeah, when he puts that oh, two terabyte right. in a it pro, the original then he'll have to Oh, do did you never stuff. do anything with that drive that you pulled out? I think I, I put it in the casing that you you had me take it out of that casing. It's yeah. the one you told me to buy. But did you ever use it? For, I don't know if I ever actually put. If you've never actually like there. messed with that drive, you might actually be able to just stick it right back in there and have so it work. I could just plug it into a PC and it should tell me based on the folders and everything. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do, do that. that. I don't know if you want. No, yeah. I wouldn't. Yeah, I, I want to just format it. Just fucking format it. Whatever. It's not that hard. Okay. Sony Sony has a tutorial up on how to do it. It's it's it is arcane, but but they have a guide. Okay. So it's easy. It's but not, also deactivate hard. your hardware. Oh, of course, like, yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, no, I'm good about that. Right, the, so. uh, the, the PS4 to PS4 transfer actually will deactivate a oh, system does it? in okay. the process. Okay. Uh, but it leaves everything on that hard drive. So sure. I have, like, my the PS4 I transferred from is now just not my primary PS4. Hmm. Uh, but it is still, it still has my accounts and stuff on it. So you would, you would have to, you would have to manually wipe it after that. It doesn't, okay. yeah. it doesn't move it all off. You're going to keep that old one? Yeah, I guess. I was trying to decide if I should try to sell mine or not. I also have a white Destiny PS4, so now I have three mm. PlayStation 4s in the mm. house, and that's dumb. <laughs> no, that's kind of dumb. You never know. Hey, there are three TVs in the house. There Why you go. There you so, go. So yeah. now there are Xbox Ones and PS4s at each one, <laughs> which is a really stupid thing. <laughs> now you could be gaming all the time. That's right. Don't stop. It's never Why stop would you? gaming. 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 I got to buy a PS4, uh, a PS4 4K TV. Yeah. So, yeah. And then I would only want to play games on that. Mm. So yeah. Uh, Jeff, this emerged like hours ago. I think you know more about it than I do. Okay, I've got it all in front of me, but it is twisted. What's going on with Rock Fraction? The game show? Oh, uh, I, I don't know. I didn't actually read the story. Yeah. I just sent it to you. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, so, I came upon this yeah. right before. It just happened this morning. But no, uh, it, it seems like there's been an ARG going for a long time yeah. where sigils were working their way into various games, uh, uh, and it's yes. it's in a lot of different games. And it sounds like that there was one in that showed up in Firewatch's yep. new Wander Around mode, mm -hmm. as opposed to the core game, which I think is <laughs> still something of a Wander Around mode. Sure. Uh, and there was a, something in there that led people to a website and blah, blah, blah. They found a video of the Frog Fractions dude and some other dude eating what? soup, I guess. Mm -hmm. So it seems like we might be headed in a Frog Fractions 2-esque direction. Uh, so th these symbols that kind of look like, you know, the Westworld maze it's, or yeah, whatever. That's exactly what I was thinking of. What the hell? So they're being included in other games? Oh, yeah. So yeah. this is this was a story that came out. I think Patrick has been from uh, he's been, he's Vice. Been, he's been getting been, the emails. He's been cracking this open. Yeah, like a bunch of... What's Vice? Uh, Waypoint. It's right? a website about doing drugs and doing stuff. Gotcha. Right. Yeah. Um. And uh, yeah. So he, he's yeah he's been getting those emails. Like a, I think like for, for months and months. Fifteen different and months. indie games or something. Like yeah. a bunch Crazy. of indie games have these same looking sig sigils showing up. Which in them. you know it's it's you know Valve did its thing with the potatoes right. Yeah. I mean, and then that was in a ton of different indie games too. So yeah. it's it's not unprecedented for, the, for this guess, sort yeah. of stuff to happen. The part the part of this whole thing that threw me for a loop is that I think the oldest game that had one of these in it was from like 2003. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't I don't know if I'm assuming they just went and recently shoved that yeah. in there and the, not that it was in there all along, uh, but. Uh, uh, but yeah, it seems like the stuff is maybe starting to point at something. Don't say it. Don't I'm looking at the phrase. The I'm looking at the phrase super tasters, mm -hmm. as in soup or yep. tasters. Mm -hmm. Wolfgang Puck organic French onion. 
Okay. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you got me. Uh, yeah, I don't know. ARGs are awesome, and I don't have time to yes. follow them. <laughs> yes, it is much. <laughs> I wish I did because that's rad. That stuff is super dumb and 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 a- it's, ARGs. It's creative when it when it, when they're very creative and lead to a lot of yes. people doing acting that shouldn't be doing acting. Yeah, I always yeah. think that, I think they're fun. Oh, I sure. think that's great. It's a- like we're putting on a play <laughs> on the internet, yeah. and it's weird. ARGs are like the Eve Online of of real life metagames. Sure, in that you can't get into them yourself, but yeah. you're happy to look at what other people have figured out. <laughs> And done. Did, did I know anything, the truth behind Lonely Girl 15. Right. Me. Did anything come from that brewery thing in the East Bay? I don't, I don't think, think so. Because that was originally going to be, it seemed like that was definitely Frog Fractions 2 what? adjacent, right? I don't know. What I, that? I forgot. There was yeah, a, I, thought address. Address. I thought it was a grocery store. It, not a brewery. I don't know. I don't remember. We, we fucking Google mapped it at one point. And, and I think it was the website was for a brewery, and then we oh, Google mapped it, it and then it and was then, like, that's a grocery store. Right. That's yeah. what it was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Hmm. I, I pulled out the original Kickstarter for Frog Fractions 2 and it said expected delivery September 2015. Right. So maybe it's been out there. I yes. was going to say either they're way behind or it's been out for over a year yeah. and nobody's found it yet. It's in Firewatch. Maybe maybe yeah. that dude is just getting sick of waiting for people to find it and right. starting okay, to drop. Okay, I guess we need to come up with a new ARG because like, right, right, this one was too much. going to have to leave you idiots some breadcrumbs because you haven't figured it out yet. Yeah, who knows? Uh, Frog Fractions is good. Yeah, it, it, re- reading all this made me want to go back and play Frog Fractions. Yeah, kind of. Um, nobody could buy the NES Classic. What are you talking about? I got one in my bag. You uh-huh. want to buy it? Uh, no, nine hundred dollars. Good. <laughs> I'm I'm good. Oh, that thing is cool, but like, there's just enough about it that yeah, would be clumsy to deal with. So I don't actually yeah, care. Yeah. Uh, I hear if but, you plug in a Wii Classic controller to it, one of the buttons becomes the reset button. Oh, button. oh so you really? Can, you can go back to the menu without having to walk up to it and hit reset. That's helpful. That's cool. Uh, That's cool. Um, well, yeah, I mean, be nice, helpful. That, that thing's cool. Yeah. Like we we put up a video. Took, we took a couple hours and, and went through it and looked at all that stuff. And, yeah. and, and it's exactly what they said it was going to be. Yeah. Uh, it's a cool case, it, man. There, are, there is some emulation issues with the really? audio. There are, oh, there's no. like the, Frank Cifaldi was saying the noise channel is off. Which that's a lines up with, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, but I mean, we got a bunch of emails about this. It launched on Friday. It sold out in like 60 seconds. Like yeah. I, I, I feel like I saw people saying that Amazon was like, if not down, like super yeah, slow. Yeah, I was going to the Amazon homepage and it was like giving me a captcha. And then when I solved <laughs> the captcha, it was like, fuck, I don't know. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah, wow. that, such is the demand for this thing. Wow. In fact, I, I like a local SF news station on their local news broadcast had a segment about it this really? weekend saying, yeah, like, it's the thing you can't get this holiday, uh, which led a bunch of people to email us saying, why the fuck didn't they make more of them? I don't know. <laughs> now, when you say the classic controller plugs into the console, right? Yeah. Well, that cable's no longer than... Yeah, that sucks too. I'm not. I'm not saying that, like that's gonna, but it, but it's gonna. It's I, at least a button that's gonna let you. I guess I. I was thinking of like, oh, well, yeah, you can have it wirelessly with well, the Wii remote. You or could also but buy you extension can't do cables and yeah. do all that shit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That that stuff is less than ideal. That thing is really cute though. It's a yeah. cute tiny Nintendo. Yeah, it's, mm-hmm. it's it's like shocking when you see it in person how small yeah, it is. It's not, it's, not uh, the, it's not the way I would want to play those games. And and the more I think about it, the more I think, man, fuck them for putting Simon's Quest on that thing. What are they thinking? <laughs> that's messed up. Oh, ah, that. I got, I got a special place in my heart for that. The game. Japanese yeah. fucking Famicom, one of these has River City Ransom on it. What, oh. the, fuck are, what the fuck are we doing? Oh, mm. man. That's cool. Um, <laughs> I would trade five of the games that are on there for one River City Ransom. Yeah. Of course. I, uh, yeah, I probably would as well. Thing is going for hundreds of dollars on eBay now. If I, I think I saw somebody saying they saw a listing for over a thousand. I just, I, I don't have a good answer for that other than like, I, I hate to just like fall right back into the old conspiracy theory of like they're trying to drive demand by making way fewer than. Yeah, people want, but like, f- how much could that thing cost to make? Uh, yeah, fifteen like, bucks, no, like nothing. Twenty, maybe, maybe. They have to pay the licensing fees to the. Well, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I was thinking just manufacturer cost. Who mm-hmm. knows? Who knows with all the licensing and, and stuff? I uh, saw a, a report. I saw someone saying that data potentially passes over the USB port on that thing. Hmm. Which means, like, so uh, Gamespot cracked theirs open, and yeah. and. and it's pretty Spartan in there. There's not a lot to do. Yeah. But if there's data over that port, who knows what you could actually yeah. do with that thing? Mm. Yeah. There's always potential for for it to be something more than it is. Sure, uh, sure. We'll see. Uh, officially or unofficially or both? Put something else. Unofficial. Unofficially. Unofficially. Okay, so like still, sure. it couldn't be like an official update. Maybe they'll sell they a rob- the robot that is you can plug into that <laughs> port and yeah, just uh, a little one though. Yeah, yeah. You plug the amiibo into it. Okay. Ah. Okay. 
Uh, Nintendo is out there saying, like, yes, we will supply more units yeah. throughout the holiday and into the new year. Uh, I would expect them to have plenty lined up for Black Friday. Yes. Yeah. Smash um, controllers were super hard to come by. And the, we, yeah. the, uh, oh, yeah, that's right. the adapter, yeah. do you remember right. that? She mm-hmm. couldn't, couldn't find yeah. those anywhere. Yeah. But then, like, third parties started bringing the adapter, and it seemed like anyone who wanted one is totally able to get one especially now yeah but i I feel like that thing is a little bit more of a special interest item than this which is like of course everybody in the world is going to want one of these things yeah i didn't think it would be that big this thing yeah oh dude Hmm. yeah this just seemed like yeah feels like every every fucking hot topic in the world could move these things by the hundreds yeah uh but i guess more of them will get out there dude at the mall kiosks trying to sell you shitty quadcopters (laughs) yeah just gonna say it's got a little end cap of them sitting there yeah (laughs) So I wonder, uh, like, you know, it seems like that they're pursuing traditional retail with this thing a lot more than that type of shit. So I wonder if, if it would ever make its way to some middle of the mall ass yeah. kiosk. Uh, this ain't no middle of the mall ass <laughs> uh, fucking retro game system. No, no, it's not. Jeff, did you do the uh, did you do that Ubisoft side mission in Watch Dogs 2? No, it hasn't popped up yet. Really? Yeah. Okay. Did you see this video floating around? I did not watch the video, but yeah. I, I watched it. It's short, but uh, yeah, either either Ubisoft ginned up a fake uh, E3 trailer for a fake Ubisoft game for this side mission in Watch Dogs 2, or they are beginning to virally market an, an actual new Ubisoft game in Watch Dogs 2. It's a great fucking idea. It's yeah. pretty yes. cool. Yeah. It's an awesome. And, and fits with the tone of the game yeah. pretty well. Yeah. Um, yeah, like like you can walk up to their office in the game and it looks just like their office. And there's a trophy that implies that there is something to, that you will do in that office. Huh. That there will be a mission. That, this, yeah, this, yeah, this, yeah. this so story says there's a mission about stealing a, tr- a game trailer from right. their office. Yeah. yeah, and you'll hear employees like talking like if you hack their phones, they'll be like, oh, we, surely we can't have another trailer leak, right? Yeah, apparently there's dialogue nice. in there from Ubisoft employees complaining about the Assassin's Creed leak. Yeah. Oh, wow. Which is also pretty good. That's really funny. Awesome. Uh, but this trailer, yeah, like it's, uh, so it's got a bunch of watermarks on it, like, like E3 Rev 03, just like yeah. real obvious, you yeah. know, you yeah. know, like like unfinished trailer type stuff. Uh, but it's for this like super colorful space game with some country and western type music in the background. Hmm. Just a bunch of space stations and ships and planets huh. with a really like bright, colorful art style. Okay. Uh, and no name. Seems that's cool like, seems like it yeah. could be cool i don't know who knows yeah. what it is but uh but if that's actually what they're doing with i this. hope i hope that it's real yeah. i hope yeah. that that's real and not something that they just like ginned up or something that is canceled or i hope that i hope that this happens yeah but what would be even neater is if it was a fake thing they made <laughs> that now that this is happening they're like no fuck <laughs> green light that thing. it's like machete yeah like the way that happened <laughs> yeah. right <laughs> we've uh, got to make this game now <laughs> yes uh um, that's neat yeah it is it is cool it's neat that it's not just like for honor. Like this yeah. would be, it would yeah. be so be easy for them to just slide in. The, the, the thing they have coming out yeah. next, yeah, uh, that that would probably not go over so well. But not as neat as if it was just a video of Eric Pope. Mm. That, that would be, be better. Great. I would accept that as well. FMV Kingpin Eric Pope. Seriously, for sure. Um, and then also some Ubisoft executives are being accused of insider trading hmm. by by a French regulatory body. Really? All right. Uh, yes, the huh. a, the AMF, uh, a regulatory body for the French stock stock market. I, I mean, this is not a financial podcast. I don't know how deeply we can delve, it is now. We can delve into this. How stuff. much money you got in your wallet right now? Uh, Giannis <laughs> Malat finances. Uh, Giannis Malat, who runs Ubisoft Montreal, is the only one I've seen named. Hmm. There are five people. Uh, Accused of dumping a bunch of stock prior to uh, the Watch Dogs and the crew delays a couple of years ago. Oh. Remember that? Oops. Yeah. When those games got delayed out of the fiscal year. Yeah. And then, of course, the stock is going to drop after something like that. Right. So that stuff's ongoing. They're denying any culpability. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Right. <laughs> that's yeah. That's the story. Who knows? Who knows how that stuff will go? Mm. But there it is. It happened. Um, I think that's all that happened in the world of video games that I found over the last few days. Cool. That's all I heard about. Yep. Sure. Uh, so let's take another quick break and then come back with some emails. Shaving. Sometimes you just need to shave. Yeah. It gets, you know, you let it grow out too long. It gets all itchy. Uh huh. Scratchy. You got to take care of business. Maybe you got to go somewhere nice. Maybe you work somewhere where you got to look clean shaven. Maybe gotta, that's important. Got to clean yourself up sometimes. Sometimes you definitely have to clean yourself up. 
Uh, but it doesn't have to cost an arm and a leg to keep that other arm and leg clean shaven. I know. I need both arms to do the shaving. Exactly. That's why you can turn to the Dollar Shave Club. Uh. They'll send you razors in the mail, Ooh. and they're not going to cost a ton of money. They got stuff for your hair. They got stuff for your face. They got stuff for your underparts, it says Oh, here. wow. I thought everything would be above the neck, but well, man. No, they, they got all, all kinds of business. They got a, a lot of different products, not just razors, but yeah. they've also got razors. Oh, yeah. For everywhere to keep you feeling and looking fresh. So get a hold of those grooming products. They're all affordable. With this special offer, they're even more affordable because here's your chance to discover why millions and millions of members love Dollar Shave Club. Yeah. You can get a one-month trial of any razor for just a dollar with free shipping. That's, wow. No it, catch, no hidden fees, no commitments. You can cancel whenever you like. You have nothing to lose. That really is a Dollar Shave Club. Yes. You have nothing to lose except perhaps the hair on your face oh, man. if you wanted to shave it, perhaps. That's some sharp material. Uh-huh. You can get all the details over at dollarshaveclub.com slash bombcast. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash bombcast. All right, stop the presses. This is the weird thing about doing the podcast live. All right, I'm people, st- people, uh, hang on. I'm stopping them. People can get, get at us and uh, amend the stuff okay. we're talking about in real time. Slow, slow. Okay, and it stopped. Okay, all right. A word from Twitter. Oh, first of all, uh, I got a tweet that says somebody already hacked the NES Classic to boot Ubuntu. Okay, okay. So, just in case you were wondering. That's fun. Uh, is but that like Linux? Yeah, it, it is Linux. Yes, oh, yeah. okay. Uh, but the big thing is, uh, uh, Kotaku has just run a report about that. Maybe fake, maybe not. Uh, Ubisoft game in Watch Dogs. Okay. Uh, Jason Trier has reported, based on talking with two sources familiar with goings on at Ubisoft, uh, that it is in fact a real game called Pioneer. Huh. huh. Um, which is basically they just describe it as a space exploration game with a Western theme. I don't know, but that they also say cool. it's in trouble. Uh, the quote they got from one source says mm. the project was supposed to be announced next year. Uh, but that won't happen now, and Pioneer is being retooled. Oh. Mm. Mm. Where did he get this um, info? Like, did he ride a bus in Watch Dogs? Yeah. <laughs> Saw yes. somebody's laptop? Yeah, somebody, you hold down somebody. L1 and push X, and okay. then the text messages appear. Oh, check. cool. Yeah. Somebody, somebody had their laptop open, yes. Uh, I'm trying to find the other quote. Uh, I don't see the exact language, but there's some, some talk about leads having been replaced on the game. Hmm. Some some development turmoil, which whatever. I mean, that happens constantly on all kinds of games. Yeah. It's nothing particularly unusual. But this is uh, all kind of less fun now. But they do say yeah, yeah, exactly. They do say <laughs> when they decided to make the Easter egg in Watch Dogs 2, they didn't know it was going to be like this, oh, so it's a bit awkward. Sh- yeah. Like they probably expected the game to be like f- smooth sailing and close to announcement at this point. Huh. What if they patch it? So they I mean they they spelled DJ Quick's name wrong on the playlist, so they have to make a patch <laughs> ah, anyway. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Uh, so maybe they just replaced that video with, ah, this is Beyond Good and Evil 2. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Maybe uh, they patch in some new VO. It's going like, ah, that game's getting canned anyway. Uh, that would also be pretty good. <laughs> like, the, the longer they can have a sense of humor about their own stuff, yeah. the, the more entertaining it is. Still, that is, yeah, a bit awkward now. Uh, yeah. Hmm. So, uh, all right, let's move into the emails for the week. Yeah. I've got a handful here. Uh, the emails increasingly seem to not be about video games. Okay. Uh, Great. But as always, how I can, long is that trend going now? Uh, Seven years. Kind of a slide, yeah, yeah. A gradual decline. I mean, as always, I can only read the emails that get sent in. So, it's not up to you. That's what I got to work with. Yeah. Bombcast at giantbomb.com. Uh, Taylor from this Cleveland. This is what the people want to know. That's true. Good. Hot yeah. button Let's topics. To them. Yeah, this is crowdsourced podcast I podcast content. Teeth. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Taylor from Cleveland writes in about Big Macs. Okay. Apparently they are test marketing two new Big Macs in our area. A smaller Mac called Mac Junior and a big Big Mac called the Grand Mac That's... made of a quarter pound of meat. Mm. Okay. Uh, I, I know this name, yeah. I know this doesn't pertain to games, but if it need be, I can shoehorn Good. the topic into it. How come they didn't call the Mac Jr. the Little Mac? You're right. Is there a copyright there? No, his Mac Jr. is probably just a better name. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he included a piece, I don't have it right in front of me, but he included a piece of kind of promotional material, like photos of the stuff. Hmm. 
The mm. Grand Mac looks like a pretty damn big burger. Well, that's something that was like, you know, people have been ordering those for years. Kind of an off like, menu. Yeah, yeah off like menu. a build your own. Yeah, huh. yeah. Like what the quarter you... pound patty with the Big Mac? Yeah, what is, like, I've I only had... a Big Mac, but mm. with quarter pound patties. Basically. I've only had one Big Mac in my life. So wow, are really? they? Yeah. Uh, and that was on a, like, dare. Um, Why? I tend to stick to the things I know and I like, it, it and had, plain it, it quarter had, pounders. Yeah, and I was going to say it has a bunch of shit on it that you probably don't like. That was it. And when know. I started getting more open minded about food and stuff, it was Reiner, uh, the old uh, boss at Game Informer. Uh, he said, deal. "I'll pay for it if uh, if you eat one." I was like, "Yeah, okay, I'll take free McDonald's." So I had one. Then it was fine. I didn't love it. I mean, quarter plain quarter pounder with cheese will always be my go-to. Although they had the ones for a dollar that were just the cheeseburgers, the barbecue ranch burger, they had Fritos mm. and a barbecue ranch on it. Yeah. Those were incredible, and they took in those burger? away those uh, on the burger. Yeah, it uh, was amazing. It's one of their best burgers were, ever. Was that a nationwide thing, or was that just something I don't they were testing in, in Minnesota? I, I think I, they I, had a nationwide. I had never heard God. of it. The barbecue Fritos ranch burger. burger. I miss it so much. They were a dollar, and they were amazing. Yep. There was the Texican Whopper that I got when I was in <laughs> London. Okay. And it had it had a taco pocket on it that was not unlike the Jack in the Box tacos. Uh, oh that, yeah, but, yeah. But, but burger shaped sealed taco pocket. Awesome. That was on the burger, and that was pretty awesome. What was the uh, Arch Deluxe? Because I remember that like that advertising the, blitz being insane, that was, that was and everyone build, hated it. That was the build your own. Like we set the cold stuff aside so you can put it on at the last second and have it all be fresh. Oh, okay. Is nah, it, well, wasn't it? They they would put it on. The, the McDLT was the, th- the hot side, hot, cool side, cool thing. Oh, was it? Okay. Yeah, so I thought the Arch Deluxe was just I'm a sorry. Thing. The Arch yeah, Deluxe yeah, was, right. the was just a fancy in making an upscale burger. That's right. That's right. Uh, okay. And you could get it with bacon. And they so they had circular bacon that was like a pepper bacon right. that was really good. Right. Uh, that they would only put on the Arch Deluxe. And uh, I forget what else was on it, but it was like it was their attempt to try to make something that was upscale. Okay. And it was. Fucking, I don't know, whatever. Did fun. you guys ever get uh, McDonald's pizzas out here? No. What? They were no. good. They were good. Little they personal were, pizzas. Really? They had them probably mm. early 90s. They um, they try pizza every five years. It's always good. Somewhere they're testing pizza right now, I'm sure, but it, it never They quite... They do pizzas good. They do ribs good. And then everything they do standard, you know, is great. I don't think, I'm trying to think of something that they've really failed at. Like, I never had the Arch Deluxe. I know that failed as a marketing thing, mm-hmm. but I'm sure it tasted fine. Like, I don't think they've ever made anything that I didn't I, like I wish, taste I of. actually wish that they still had that bacon. I thought that that pepper, the circular peppered stuff? bacon in a circular shape was it was effective bacon for a burger. Mm. Um, but whatever. I should Do you like the McRib? Yeah, it's great. The last time, mm, last I had to get time it brought it back. onions though. Like, yeah. oh, I always get it just the patty. Onions, they they don't brought do it, it back me. too many times, and the it last time, the last though. time it came it's back, still, I got yeah. one and was like, oh, oh really? it was it was a little too much too soon. I thought huh. it was kind of gross, but it's a regional thing. Like when they bring it back, though, like waves. Yeah, I yeah. Think yeah. So. Okay. The McRib is kind of gross. Oh, it's great mm, when you get down to it. It's really yeah, great. when you get. Mm. I like real ass good ribs, but I can also like appreciate McDonald's ribs. That's not. That's not even ribs. Oh, well, yeah. it's fake. It's ribs meat. Yeah. Also, I should. I should probably close Twitter during this, but Steve Kim right uh, reaches out because he just got back from Korea and says that they have that thing over there, the Grand Mac, except they call it the Mega Mac. That's oh, a way better name. That's a and, good. And name. he has a picture of it here, and there are four pa- hamburger patties on it. What? Are they all quarter pounder? I don't think that would be a pound. So? I don't think so. They might not have quarter pounders in Korea. Oh, okay. The quarter pounder patty is the right size for a burger it's, patty. It's a serious amount of hamburger. Those are regular patties. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think those appear to be regular patties, but there are four of them. Okay. Right, in a Big Mac configuration. I, can, can anybody recite the Big Mac jingle? To all be fatty, special sauce, lettuce, um, cheese, something, something on a sesame, sesame seed bun. Yeah, when did close. they retire that? That's close. I don't know. That's not ringing a bell, and I've seen a lot of McDonald's commercials. Who was the moon man? Uh, Mac Tonight. Yeah, he was cool. Oh, he was the, the moon, moon and he guy. wore sunglasses yeah. and drove a motorcycle. I, yeah, okay. I had a bunch of toys of him. As, he was a cool guy. That's weird. He played piano. As fast food back. mascots go. That guy is pretty good. Yeah, they I need think. to bring him back. Grimace is the fucking best. Yeah, Grimace right. is great. Yeah. The fright. No, uh, Mary McCheese. Mary McCheese. Yeah, his uppity ass. Is he still fuck, in office? Fuck that guy. I think so. Okay. I don't fucking, think you we can. Gotta, be, we've got to. We've got to. We've got to vote in fucking fast food term limits. What was the girl duck's name? There was a girl duck. Birdie. Yeah, Birdie. maybe. Yeah. Birdie, okay. Birdie Grimace. I don't think Birdie was a duh. She, they had she, a beak. I, I don't mean to fucking blow your mind here, but like most birds have beaks. Oh, I guess they do, but it looks like a duck beak. It does. You're probably right. I think but Birdie's a duck. I would have yeah. named her Ducky yeah. to be That's lean more name. on the duck thing. What is Grimace? A duck. I don't think you have to be a real, you don't have to have a real world analog to live in McDonald land because Grimace doesn't have one, so it doesn't have to be a duck or a bird. It's just a glob. Yeah. So yeah. it's a purple thing. Yeah. He's a feeling. Save us from this, Brad. <laughs> All right. Uh, my God. Again, what else you got? Again, I can only read what 
comes into the podcast. Uh, this comes from uh, Abhishek. I hope I'm saying that right from Los Angeles. Has Dan eaten at Wingstop yet? If not, he needs to. Mm. I guarantee he will forget all about the trash that is Buffalo Wild Wings and realize the one true fast food chain quality wi- chicken wings brand. Aren't they just the wings that Pizza Hut does? I, I have no idea. No, I, I want to say I yes. think they're owned by Pizza Hut and it'll be like a Pizza Hut slash Wingstop. Mm. There is a freestanding and- Wingstop in my town. Okay. Is well, I have or not me. freestanding. It's part of a strip mall sort of situation, shopping center kind of thing. But it is not combined with any other. Food. What is what I, is Pizza Hut part of? Yum. They're part yum. Of yum. yum. Yeah, yum the, the Kentucky Hut trilogy is all yum. God. Um, I think I I have not gone to a wing stop and eaten wings there. But like sometimes you'll get a Pizza Hut deal where it's like, oh, order this pizza and it comes with eight wings or whatever. And it's like, yeah, sure, bring it on. Um, so if those are Wingstop wings, I've had them and they're fine. Like Domino's wings are fine, Pizza Hut wings are fine, but they're they are the McRib to like real ass ribs. Oh. Buffalo Wild Wings are real ass Buffalo wings. Uh, they're the best. Yeah, yeah. I I went. That's the place we went. That I one took time, you there. Right? Yeah, yeah, those are real chicken wings. Thank you. Sure, they're, they're real. Sure, you enjoyed them. Real great. It's I, real meat on a real bone. Yeah. It's the same bone that the meat was grown on, so yeah. Whatever. <laughs> like yeah. that counts. So the answer is no. Uh, I, I've not knowingly eaten Wingstop wings, uh, but I would sure, try them, you're certainly. Not, you're not opposed to it? No, of course not. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Vince from Reston writes in again. Uh, I noticed that there was a deal at my local supermarket where you could get five 12 packs of a popular diet soda for $10. As you can guess, these 12 packs had double XP Titanfall codes in them. Since my girlfriend was with me and I knew she was silently judging me, I only went with five packs. Uh, <laughs> my question is, what would you have done in my situation? Would you have cleared the store out? I'm guessing there were about 20 more 12 packs with codes left. Uh, and yes, I've already checked. The limit is 1,000 codes per person, so there is not a feasible limit. Hmm. Uh, I, I, is there a per time limit on entering it on doing Doritos? I want to s- Mm, I don't know because the website but... stopped working for me this morning. Mm. Uh, it, there's a per day. There is. I think it's ten per day. Yeah. Okay. Um, no, it's definitely more than ten. Is it really? Oh yeah. Wow. Okay. Man, you got to line on some codes, huh? Yeah. I. Th- if you do the math on that, because the twelve packs only come with one code, and it it's not oh, what it's not twelve. If, oh fuck that! Twelve packs of cans only come with a code. There's yeah. no code on the really? can. Just get a twenty ounce. That's probably the most cost effective way to do it. Yeah. Right? Like mm. if you get a bottle, that's so they had two liter bottles for ninety nine cents at the Target, uh, and that would actually have been the cheapest way. Oh, but that's so much. And soda. then if you actually liked drinking the soda, you would be getting an effective deal on the soda that's as well. Way too much. But soda. I, yeah, exactly. No, like I don't want to drink any fucking Mountain Dew or Diet Mountain Dew ever again at this point. Also, so. at, at a certain point, you're paying more and more money and throwing out a bunch of junk to pay to play less Titanfall. Right. <laughs> That was that was the other thing is now that I've regenerated uh, and uh, prestiged effectively and and, and well, now, now I'm like Titanfall, okay because you get you, Coliseum tickets you get the right yeah, yeah, yeah playing a lot of that yes I I, 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 bu- I had a bunch of boxes of Die Mountain Dew delivered uh, to my apartment and they were Titanfall branded on the box but it's the ones that don't have any codes yeah ouch I don't, I don't or, know, on the yeah, top it just says like New York Titanfall I don't, I don't, but I mean I, I love Die Mountain Dew that's what I drink anyway Ugh, so that's, that's rough it's gross it's great not great. Um, Roger writes in from Sweden and says, uh, I'm watching Mario Party Party 8. With his current knowledge on the subject, Dan seems willing to take a shot of lava on a bet. Oh, God. <laughs> a shot of lava for yeah. $500. I didn't say I was willing. I have a question for Dan. What does Dan think that lava is made of? In Dan's mind, what happens to lava when it cools? He's just blowing it for a little bit. Lava comes shot, from right? the Earth's core. Uh, and it's very, very hot. Uh, in the magma, when tectonic plates oh. uh, uh, smash up together, they form volcanoes over uh, thousands and hundreds of thousands and millions of years. And eventually, something happens that causes the magma to go up and release through volcanoes. And it is uh, among the hottest substances on Earth, I believe. You didn't say what you think it is, though. I thought that was part of it. <laughs> I thought that was part of the question. It is. It's what, what, what does Dan think lava is made of? The core of the Earth. Hmm. The hot center unobtainium yes no it's it's just molten rock oh okay and then it's it cools just, and turns into a fucking just, rock yeah it's yeah. just incredibly hot rock that's yeah all, that's all it is yeah You'd but i mean it's gonna go straight rock. through you so it's not gonna turn into a rock in your gut no, it's gonna go straight not. through you and turn I into a rock on the ground a planet where it turns into incredibly yacht rock <laughs> <laughs> jesus help us nice <laughs> uh all right that was better than i expected sure i'll, I'll give you that I mean, I'm not going to do that. It doesn't come from the core, though. I think that's 
separate, but really, it's just, it's just hot rock. It doesn't come out of there and funnel no. up through volcanoes. The, the core of the earth is made of iron. That melted iron, like the end yes. of Terminator Two. We, have, we stuff? have we have a massive molten core of iron in this planet. That's why we have a magnetic field. That's and it is like the same that, stuff that killed the T one thousand. Prevents right? yes, exactly. Yeah. That's okay. exactly what that. That's is. what the center of the earth is. Yep. It's just a giant T-1000. So if we put him in a submarine that could drill through the base of the ocean and send him to the center of the Earth, he could die that way, too. That would be an an alternate way to beat a Terminator, yeah. That specific term. You can just crush the other ones. Right, yeah. 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 That specific one, though, I mean, maybe if it got down low enough, maybe the pressure of the ocean at the floor would would maybe... It would come back together. It'd be fine. Yeah. Kyle from Arizona. When and where is it okay to pee in public? Uh, If you you can get back to me on mm, this in a minute or two, that would be great. So he's been holding it. Sometimes it sometimes things go bad and you might have to do some things you thought you were not capable of. Absolutely. Like peeing in a bottle in your car <laughs> uh, or yeah. getting out of your car that. and running into an alley and yeah. hoping that there's no one in there. I've for, done that. As yeah. as a kid for me, the one that seemed completely socially acceptable was on the side of the interstate. Mm. Yes, yeah. or like Being in the woods the road, or something sure. if you go up and you do your best to make sure you're not visible from a road or a sidewalk or anything. I mean, eh. when you need to, like, okay, here's a, a tale of two peeing in Publix. Um, this E3, probably 2010, 2011. Um, I had to pee uh, real bad. I was very drunk after uh, some stupid thing and I was wearing a Sonic the Hedgehog hat. Um, yes, you do. And we were waiting on a cab. This is pre-Uber. And we were with a bunch of GI guys and I peed into a potted plant uh, while we were waiting, and that was a little too visible. Yeah. And so I got pulled aside uh, in our room the next day by someone saying, we need to institute a new uh, no peeing in public rule uh, for E3. And I was like, that's reasonable. Okay. I, I did not stand behind that rule, by the way. Well, I, it's it's understandable. Yeah. Uh, but then the next night, we went to a comedy club, and we were waiting for an Uber, and the club was closed, and I had to pee super bad. And so I had to run around the side of the comedy club and pee on that. Or like, no, I went to a dumpster. Like, you know, those little like okay. contained yeah. dumpster things yeah, where you open sure. the door? Yeah. That was mm-hmm. out of necessity, and I did my best to go back and conceal myself. Mm-hmm. Still got yelled at for that, but I felt that I had an argument that like I did, that was out of necessity, and I did my best to conceal it. It sure. wasn't no, just drunk inside of the road. Sure, yes, you just, yeah. yes. But also like to be told a thing one night and then to have your next story be the next night this happened but I had to, it was, the yell you got. It was poor timing, yeah. for sure. Um, if, if there had been some distance between those two things, you might have had a case. But to literally not be able to go 24 hours without doing the exact same thing again... <laughs> I, I peed seven times since this podcast started. Yeah, no, I know. You, you I know, understand I, I, how I, this no, works. No, I know, I know. <laughs> but did the comedy club not have a bathroom? It was closed, because we were there till last call. Yeah, yeah, yeah so they yeah. would close the they door. Close the bathroom. Mm-hmm. Huh. Okay. That'll, that'll they're work. not going to let you back in after, you know, like, it's, like a, yeah. it's like a bar. Yeah. When they, I did not have call, it. They're not, they're not going to no, let you come back in there yeah, and, gotcha. in there and, pee. and I looked at every other option. I was hoping there was a grocery store or something. I would have taken that in a heartbeat because I didn't want to get in trouble. But I, you got to do what you got to do sometimes. Yeah, yeah yes. that's true. Yeah, I was coming back from a work party one time uh, with a bunch of people and uh, we got stuck in traffic. And yep, it was it was absolutely necessary. So I got out of the car as we were parked and there were there, no buildings around aside from a church. And bear in mind, this is like, along the side of a highway. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I tried my damnedest to, to cover up, but I had to eventually piss on the church. Ooh, that'll happen. Yeah, uh, I'm, have you, I'm sorry about that. Have you ever peed out of a moving car? Uh, no. I did that on no, uh, I-70 to, once. No, you pee into a bottle, then you Fuck. throw the bottle. We out. were trying to get to a uh, concert in St. Louis from Kansas City when I was probably like 18 or 19. And I had to pee really bad, but we were running late. And so they were like, no, we're not pulling over. You have to you know, pee now. And we didn't have any bottles. So it's it's I seventy it's Missouri. There's not a lot of people, so I just told the guys in front, "Hey, just keep your eyes straight ahead." Roll down the window in the back, and I just had to like I put my legs like basically had to put them through the like headrest thing for support. Yeah, okay. and then I just had to kind of thrust uh, my stuff uh, out the window the best I could, sure. and then uh, you pee. And if you get it out enough, it uh, it doesn't splash back in. Uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it can be done, but, but it's but... it is going to splash all over the side of the car. Yeah. Well, yeah, but yeah, it rains. Yeah, it does. That's true. Okay. Sorry, Parker writes in. I've uh, yeah, I've I've held towels and jackets uh, while while women have had this happen mm. to them. Uh-huh. I, okay. I've I've like ran interference sure. for situations like that before, and I, yeah, it's all all types of people. People need to pee sometimes. I peed into the Bellagio fountain once. Yeah, that seems like the sort of thing that they would have videotaped you doing. And there is there is yeah, a picture. Yeah, and and come to you and said like, hey. Maybe you Motherfucker. Oh, they didn't. I think my friend just took a picture of me. Okay. Into the All plane. right. Well, that's... Yeah. I'm so Par- sorry about that, Church. Let's move on. Parker, 
uh, writes in as a follow-up to last week's French fry discussion and says, how could you guys not even discuss tater tots? Ah, they're not French fries. I mean, they're in the same family. Yeah, but but we talked about hash browns. They're just tiny hash browns. If I put a potato on this desk right now, would you say that's French fries? If we're going to... I'm I'm saying that a tater tot is closer to French fries than hash browns are. Because they're like finger food? Yeah. Yeah. No. Because you would order tater tots in any situation where you would order French fries. Let's get them both out then. I I don't know that I would. I don't know that I would. I'm not saying you would, but you could. I'm not going to put tater tot in a French fry category. I'm, oh, I dude, won't. they're totally, I, I totally in the it. same category. I, I can't do it. It's a hash brown. It's a, ah, just a little man. tiny hash brown. I say we take both out. Hmm. What about hash brown nuggets from like a Burger King? Hash brown are nuggets, basically tater tots. They are basically yeah, they're tater yeah. tots. You talking about like yeah. the oval ones? Yeah, from, like McDonald's. Ones? No, I'm no, about the Burger King ones yeah. that are tiny. I don't think I've had those. Mm. That just sounds like a tater tot. Tater man. tots are awesome. Yeah, Taco, they're good. They're not. They're not barrel shakes. They're just best little. Potato Olays, they're called. Oh, mm. they're uh, those fantastic. are good. Taco so Johns. Good. Yep. You guys don't have those here, do you? I don't even Taco know Johns. The fuck that you talk. Is it like Papa Johns for tacos? <laughs> sure. Okay. It's got a monkey mascot. Oh, well. Do they? He rides a horse, or no? He rides a dog. In the oh. commercials, the monkey takes off the hat. I'm the listening dog to the radio back. this morning, and they seem to imply that the average person eats a hundred pounds of potatoes a year. Okay. Wow. Oh I yeah. Or maybe more. I haven't. I would think more. I feel like you're you're what makes it the average because I. <laughs> Because think about that. That's, you know, like you, rough math, that's what, like two pounds of potatoes a week. Oh, oh. So 100 pounds per year. So that's like huh. half my body weight. It's I could like, totally, it's yeah. Like, it's I like could two, totally do two that. pounds a week. Yeah, yeah sure. That seems crazy. I'm on a huge zesty fry kick right now. I probably think had I, 10 pounds of zesty fries. I'd say most month. weeks I eat zero pounds of potatoes. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. zero potatoes. Oh, with you. Most weeks. Yeah. So someone out there is eating fucking 400 pounds of potatoes a year to, yeah. Uh, Counteract. I, I got you, fam. Ten years ago, I nice. definitely was. Yeah. Now I think you're right. Two pounds a week seems like a lot. I don't yeah. eat that many now. Yeah. Huh. It's a lot of starch. Yeah. Uh, All them carbs. I mean, it sounds like a beautiful dream. Don't get me mm-hmm. wrong. Oh, sure. I'm not casting aspersions. Yeah. Tough to keep up with, though. Uh, anonymous email from New York. Uh, I used to work at Yelp, and per your "Do Reviews Really Matter" discussion last week, I have the following to add. Uh, Reviews really matter, uh, but not in a super straightforward way. A business with middling reviews often does fine because some negative reviews are actually a good thing. And he has a link to a uh, report Hmm. that goes into some detail, but he says consumers are wary of any business that has just five star ratings at this point. Obviously, there will be outliers, but broadly speaking, a business that has a four star rating with 100 reviews will perform much better in terms of generating customer leads than a business uh, with a five-star rating, but only 10 reviews. Uh, customers have been trained to look at reviews in aggregate and also appreciate yeah. a business owner who reaches out to weirdos who complain online and tries to make good. That's definitely true. That's, I see that on Yelp. Yeah. I see the people running the place like responding mm-hmm. to reviews. I'm like, ah, these people probably care. Yeah. Um, My favorite is when they're like, oh, I remember you. Yeah. You're a nightmare <laughs> person. <laughs> <laughs> I've only seen a few of those, but those are, those are pretty awesome. Uh, moreover, the only thing that we can definitively say that separates uh, the times that customers leave reviews is the customer service that they receive. There is virtually no correlation between the quality of the work, food, etc., and the reviews that a business receives. At the end of the day, people on the internet really only review their customer service experience, which may help to explain why so many, really? but this place was so highly rated online, why was the food so middling experiences seem to occur. I hate that so much because... If I'm, let's say I'm in a different city and I'm just looking up Yelp, you know, I want to find something with good reviews nearby or whatever. All I really give a shit about is, is this food good? Yep, yep. Uh, you know what, if you get a dicky waiter or something, sure, whatever. It's, it's it might not, take a little not, bit longer. It's not great, but at least yeah. the food was good. Yeah, it's not yeah. ideal, yeah. but whatever. You just want to eat the food. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's why it's always good to scan through and like read the reviews and be like, yeah, okay, they yeah. seem like a dick that like... Like you see the same shit on like like Amazon, like you see people leave bad reviews on something because FedEx fucked up their order right, or right. like like Newegg didn't have a video card in stock so they leave it a one star, like just, yeah, just fucking dumb stupid. shit that yeah. shouldn't be there in the first place. Yes, that stuff is uh, a mess for sure. Um, Let's see, here's an email from Dan. Different Dan. Oh. No. Uh... Brad asked if, about if there are any new vector games during your Atari flashback quick look. Uh, it turns out that a small group actually made one that yeah. I saw this year at Replay FX in Pittsburgh. 
It's called VEC9, and it looks cool it looks as fuck. fucking crazy. Uh, I recommend you check it out if you're all interested in vector games. I went to the site he linked, and he's right. It looks cool as fuck. Yeah, I saw a trailer for that a while back, yeah. and like I wasn't sure if it was real or not. Yeah. It, it just, <clears throat> is this like it, on a CRT it, monitor? Yeah, like it's a on a vector set? monitor. Yeah, wow. it's on a vector monitor, so it looks like a vector game, except like a modern vector game. Oh, yeah. wow. Like it's, doing stuff with 3D mm, models that those old games couldn't cool. do. It's really crazy. Huh. Yeah. It's really crazy. It makes me Shit. want to go see that thing. Yeah, if if I could track one of those down nearby, I would yeah. I would love to take. Okay. Uh, can you download the game? Like, is it, as long as you have a vector monitor to run it on, you can just get it. I or? don't. I don't know. What would you? What would you pipe from? I don't to know. The I have no idea how you. What you would even hook up to a vector monitor to output to it? I, I don't know. Any, no idea. I, how yeah, stuff all works. I saw was like video of an arcade cabinet that looked yeah. impossible. Yes. Huh. Yeah, vec9, vec9.com is the uh, is the address where you can see a video of that thing. But is this just like one custom built, or are they actually gonna? I think they might have two of them. I don't actually know. Whatever. I don't know. It uh, looked maybe a little Star Foxy, kind of like yeah, a third yeah. person, or like Afterburner, kind of a third person, like okay. a jet flying combat kind of game. I guess there are like there are ways to display vectors on a vector monitor that will break the monitor. What? Because uh, there were like <laughs> ROM hacks for Tempest that would add new tubes and stuff like like Tempest tubes. Hmm. And, all this other stuff. And I remember hearing that there were some of those that could theoretically damage a vector monitor, well, which is a really weird concept. Hmm. Also kind of scary because I'm guessing vector monitor is not easy well, to come yeah, by. Yeah. Vector yeah, malware totally. these days. <laughs> That'd be cool in our case. You see uh, Daytona, what, 3? Three? 3, yeah. yeah there's, There's a new cruising game, Cruising Blast. Oh, yeah? It's called. What? Yeah. I love uh, hearing about seems, new arcade stuff. It seems like the new cruising game is a lot more like the Fast and Furious games that Raw Thrills did and less like a direct... Uh, analog mm. to the, oh, gotcha. like cruising usa or cruising world or any of that stuff so they re like released that at this uh, show called iapa yeah. uh which is like an amusement like convention i actually got to cover that kind of not through gaming stuff but like my job before mm. uh gaming we would record like uh podcasts and, and stuff like that uh, you know all the all the convention talk that was going on it's the speakers and stuff but yeah i actually got to go to one of those iapas and they've got Fucking sections for big bouncy yeah. castles and stuff, and, and like all the claw machines. It was the coolest, coolest fucking place. arcade. Uh, yeah, like I went to a couple of arcade shows like in the 90s and stuff like that, like a couple in Japan. Mm -hmm. and, Let's go to the and Amoa. A couple here. Uh, yeah, I think so. Nice. I think I went to AMOA and I went to one in Reno. Hmm. That was where MK3 was shown for the first time. Um, and that was awesome because, yeah, it's like. Even because back then there were still like a, like an abundance of arcade machines sure. happening, so it was like there was a section of all this arcade stuff, and there was some pinball still happening. But then yeah, it was just like here's a ton of redemption machines with just like fake tokens sitting out there. So you're like, oh yeah, look, they, check they this like out. set it to like free play yeah, or whatever. Yeah. And so yeah, it's like just weird to play neat. redemption machines with no stakes and no money. It was just like yeah, <clears throat> that was that was back when arcade games had a mystique about them because they yeah. were so much better than anything you could play at home. Yeah. By the way, Vec9 has a stun runner controller for its input. Weird. Yeah. yeah. Wow. We should we should find that thing. Um and then yeah, we, I went to like the AM show in Japan a couple of times, once or twice, and interviewed the Soul Calibur dude. Oh wow. <laughs> and then that canceled Capcom fighting game was there. The wow. the one that Capcom Fighting Jam came out instead. Yeah. Or Capcom Fighting Evolution, I think it was called, but there was another the jam one in Japan, I think. Yeah. Uh there was another one that was a similar concept that was in development around the same time. I kind of remember that, yeah. That they had there and I played it and I remember it being pretty okay. Okay. It was weird mm. that it got killed, but damn. I saw a, a 4D like arcade game. It was like kind of a uh like a time killers kind of situation, mm. but then they would like blast water at you oh, okay. inside the game. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Fucked. All oh, right. Yeah. That place is neat. We should we should cover IAPA, I think. When so, I heard that it was happening and that Daytona was there, I definitely had the feeling of like, man, that would be fucking cool to go see that shit. There's some crazy stuff yeah. there. That and the pizza convention. We need to Yes, oh, yes, yeah. yes. Expand our convention calendar next year. Yes. The thing's gotta be rough though. Like how much pizza can you cover before you just can't cover any more pizza? You gotta be selective probably. So you gotta have one, samples. Only one way to find out. I wonder how the samples are formatted. Do you think they make little like silver dollar size pizzas so you can because you need the I entire would, experience right. like when you, you go to that. like a, a barbecue cook-off or something you're not eating a giant oh, sandwich every time i know just, that you know, but but barbecue is different from pizza because pizza has a shape to it It'll make tiny I versions it, of it it probably like, depends on what they are trying to show off if mm -hmm. it's if the, if it's the quality of an oven then you know they would want to show the quality of a full piece of pizza sure. if it's dough then the crust is the number one thing mm -hmm. if it's like hey our cheese then it's going to be something different. You sure. Know? I imagine from booth to booth, it's probably slightly different. Man, is it's... there a convention just for stuffed crust? I yeah, don't, the I... stuffed crust convention. That would we be the best. Start that. That's the best part of any pizza. Have you had uh, DiGiorno stuffed crust? 
It's not bad. Uh, a couple times, it's pretty good. It's not bad. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty good. It's a good DiGiorno substitute. is all right. It's no Totino's, but it's I was, a good middle ground. I, I, I had a chuckle the other night. I had it delivered to me from Amazon Prime. <laughs> oh, now. you got a delivery DiGiorno? That's pretty I good. I don't think that's legal. Yeah, nothing broke. Okay. Yeah, no black holes. Calm okay. surfaced. Delicious. Uh, here's a simple random question from Nathan in Olympia, Washington. He just wants to know uh, what we thought of Street Fighter 3, both when it came out and now in hindsight. I totally passed it over. Really? I, I was kind of extremely disappointed. Yeah. Well, no, no I, yeah. I thought it was, you know, gorgeous and yeah. I, I could never get a grasp of, you know, the parry system and stuff. And and at that point, they didn't have a Street Fighter 3 machine in any of the arcades that I was oh, wow. close by. Um, that was the first CPS 3 game, right? I, ooh, yeah, I, can't, I can't. Red Earth might have come first. Okay. Yeah, actually. That's but it was new. Yeah. Like, wasn't that shit like kind of expensive for yes. operators? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I remember me and Ryan McDonald hearing that a play that Starbase had it in hmm. in Marin County, and we went up there. And they get it before it. Golfland? Uh, probably not. But no. Golfland is far away. Oh, sure. It's not even um, right. But we heard that they had it, and yeah. we're like, "Holy shit, we're gonna go see it!" Yeah. Uh, and I remember going and looking at it and going, "Like, man, this fireball animation is amazing." Yeah. yeah. All these characters suck. Yeah, that I I I even before I could see it in person, I remember thinking like, ah, it's like not, who the fuck not, are these assholes? They're not all the cast. like every character is weird. <laughs> this is bullshit. Yeah. Like, like just coming away from that, going like, man, fuck that game. Like being super disappointed. Yeah. It was a, it was a weird departure for sure. Like yeah, in, in the timeline, I guess you know, the, and it was a different style of characters. Yeah. Uh, so by the time they got to the second game, and then third, by the time they got the third strike, third strike it was like yeah. they had added a few more recognizable characters and mm -hmm. and that sort of stuff, but. Like that initial impression never quite wore off until yeah. relatively recently. Yeah, but even now, like I don't like most of the characters from three. Yeah, uh, I still don't. I might be with you. Yeah, uh, and I played it more, you know, than like home versions. You know, once yeah. like Dreamcast and, and Dreamcast. Like and um, yeah, I mean, I liked it, but I didn't have anyone to play with, so I kind of kind of passed over that one. So I don't have the fond memories of three like a lot of people. Yeah. Was there ever any kind of backlash to uh in Mortal Kombat three, some of those characters are a little weird like Striker and Cyrax and Sector and stuff. Was there any kind of backlash? No, I, I thought I, they were cool as shit. I remember shit. all those characters being like super well received. Yeah. Okay. I loved them all. Yeah. Which like Cabal three. some of these weird guys. Yeah. They had a ton of characters. I think it was like the run button and the dial -a combo stuff but that was more like kind of controversial, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I did not I did not and like Scorpion stuff. not being in that game. Right, right. Yeah. You know, and like, Johnny Cage not being in that game. Sub Sub Zero like, being unmasked and yeah, all just like, all kinds of stuff. That was the stuff that people were people, people were very hung up on. He just looks like Henry Rollins. Wow. Zero. Oh, that about huh. I guess Zero. Kind of I never, I never, I never, I never really. Yeah, I could I see that. Really thought nineties nineties Henry Rollins. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but Henry, Rollins was very big. That was definitely yeah. his, yes. his time. So For I could sure. see why people would make the comparison. For sure. What a liar. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but yeah, three was somewhat controversial, I guess, by the time it came out. But at the More time, because I, feel, I feel like stuff, in, in the run, yeah, in the run up to its release, yeah, I think people were looking at the characters, going, "Those fucking robots look awesome." And, you I, know. I feel like two as well, like Baraka and Jax and these yeah. new characters were fucking great and fit right in. Yeah, two was. Oh man, two was it. Two was me. two was perfect in yep. terms of like roll out and lead up to it, yeah, and people's dude. excitement and stuff yep. like, like like everything about it. Like, Young Shang Tsung, what the fuck? You dude, yeah. play as Shang Tsung, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, turn yeah. into anybody at any time, yeah. what the fuck? Yeah. Shao Kahn's incredible, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Like, two was was incredibly brilliant. like when I when I talk about arcade games having a mystique back then, like I'm ninety percent talking about that game. Yep, yeah, like it was the perfect storm of like they did so many crazy things to build on the first mm -hmm, one. Mm -hmm. Like the internet wasn't really a thing, but there was enough information coming out of AOL and stuff at that time right. to like. <laughs> seed rumors of the Kanomorph and yeah. like lists of moves floating around and like I don't know if it was by design but the way those revisions were rolling out on they were constantly adding stuff to that game yeah. and adding all the babalities and right. friendships so, and so everything so new things kept showing up in the game over a period of months God. like it was oh man it was incredible going and to then, different arcades because they had different right. revisions yeah. And, yeah. yeah and then they had that revision that changed all the fatalities and stuff and you were like those guys are dicks <laughs> What? Do, do you remember when yeah. that happened with the strategy guide for Mortal Kombat 9? They changed the inputs, uh, so Prima had to offer free <laughs> cards oh. to everyone uh, that bought the strategy guide. Yeah. Like these high-quality cards that went out with the, the right things. So they printed out all these these things with the wrong moves Oops. on it. Yeah. And the Prima guide was official, right? It wasn't necessarily... I think so. I mean, well, this would have been 2011, 2010. Yeah, I don't think Probably. people were making too many unofficial yeah. guides yeah. like that. Like, they would have had to have... <laughs> basically stolen a copy of the game from a freelancer. Right, you know, right. If it was an unofficial guide, then Warner certainly wouldn't send the game to Prima. Yeah. Uh, so hmm. huh. Those guys are done like pretty well in advance. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, it sucks that they changed that stuff last minute. 
Uh, before we move off Street Fighter, you guys think we will see a second season of DLC characters yeah. for yeah. five? Oh, yeah. Like they kind of have to, right? Yeah, like yeah. the way they I were talking about so. it as a platform, they have to keep pumping out content. Yeah. I think oh, they've already fuck. teased Akuma, right? Yes. 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 You're right. Yeah. You're right, actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Whether he not he's going to be in like a new season or I, I don't like know. Like an in, in between bonus kind of thing. Right now. I'm so, like, I'm so just but hurt by that fucking game have right you, now. Like, you play it at all regularly? Not anymore. No, no seriously, yeah. Wow. Like, it, it's just a series of bad taste being shot in my mouth every time they release, like, a new stage for, like, four fucking dollars or a new costume that doesn't include... I bought a fucking season pass, dude. Yeah. Like, give me something. Bes- oh, Did you mess with their Halloween event at all? Uh, I actually... Okay, I did buy that stage, <laughs> but... Okay. Uh, I think I only bought one costume for Nash. Okay. Th- those are super cool because it's kind of a throwback to like Darkstalkers yeah, stuff. Like, yeah. That was that was neat. I'm just oh, do they I'm do a, do they do Darkstalkers costumes? Not not, not actual Darkstalkers. Okay. Right. Not like not like, like, like hey, has this is like Dimitri, a Bishamon, but, No, like, but yeah, but it's yeah. But, but it was they've done that before because they did the like Street sure. Fighter Cross Tech and they had the crossover costumes, right? Totally. So, yeah. yeah. These are not like as overt, but yeah. Okay. What was the stage? I don't think I saw that. It was the same like a uh, Moscow stage, you know, with the dancing bear. Just dressed up. It's dressed up. And they're selling stages that are just reskins of. Yeah. I mean, they've got a lot of stuff going on in the background, I guess, but whatever. Uh, but yeah, they've got a new uh, th- that uh, who I forgot who's Rashid stage, uh, the airplane mm-hmm. like you're flying. It looks really cool. I really got I fucking love that game, the gameplay. But yeah. man, they're actively trying to push people away. I, I don't know what the hell's going on with that. Oh, nor God do they. Damn it! <laughs> I have not been in a rush to reinstall it. Yeah. I've still got in- installed. It's ready to go, I guess. But hmm. just in case. Uh, All right, a couple more emails here. Robert from Berkeley. Uh, I was watching Jeff play Lunar Lander in the Atari flashback. Uh, Quick look. I've played versions of the game before at a bar. I'm sorry, I played games. I've (laughs) played versions of the game before and a bar I lived by had the arcade cabinet. Uh, I think the game is complete trash and I'm wondering if anyone in the world actually likes Lunar Lander. Please either confirm my suspicion that the game is hot garbage or enlighten me on why it isn't. I, it came out like in what 1980, 79, something like that. Like mm. it's it's, it's a, a weird it's pace a, for like an arcade game. game. Yeah, yeah. it's um, you know at, at the time there were not that many arcade games out mm, there, so yeah. it was a unique thing. I think even by the time I would have seen it, which wouldn't have been until probably like 82, 83, 84, yeah. like it was still a unique thing. There wasn't anything else out there like it, so it was kind of cool mm. in that way. I feel like, uh, I mean, I never did this, but I almost feel like people used to make like Lunar Lander clones in like high school programming class. Yep. Isn't that totally a thing that happened? Yeah, I think so. Like, yeah. like it's kind of like Gorilla yeah. and Basic or whatever. Like, yeah. you make your Lunar Lander style thing. Oh, Gorilla dot Base. <laughs> I see. You want to play some Gorilla? Fucking yeah, I do. All right. Uh, all right, Lunar Lander. There you have it. Uh, Ben from the UK. This last email, I. Now that I know Jeff is actively playing Hitman, I think maybe Drew said he was going to start. Mm-hmm. And you started playing it, didn't you? Yeah, I've got it. Like, I feel like everybody go. is on the cusp <laughs> of enjoying some Hitman, but uh, so I almost wish I could save this email, but it's the last one, so let's read it. Uh, having played through Hitman and watching you guys do the quick look, I was wondering how you would rank each episode. Oh. I think me and Dan could at least tackle this one. Yeah. Dan likes to make lists. Yeah. I. It's got to be Sapienza first, right? Um, I don't know. That last one's very good. Now that I'm putting more time into it, that's actually a very hard. I'll read his list. He okay. included his. Uh, number one, Paris. That's a great one. I should have read it in reverse order. <laughs> <laughs> number six, Bangkok. Number five, Colorado. Number four, Marrakesh. Three, Sapienza. Hmm. Two, Hokkaido. Uh, and number one, Paris. That's pretty good. I would say maybe Marrakesh down. I think. Marrakesh is my least favorite. Yeah, like Bangkok's pretty good. We just haven't spent much time in it. I, I, I have played a good bit more of it. I've kind of gotten a feel for it. Like I'd say one of the weakest parts of Bangkok is that so many of the hotel rooms are just the same thing. Right. Like you, you Especially because you have to go find like a key card to get in all those hotel rooms. Yeah, the main structures in Paris and Sapienza I feel are more interesting. Yeah. Uh, the Colorado one I think is cool that they did. Yeah. But overall, like it's one that I would least want to go back to. Yeah. Having, but having it, it's a change of pace. It, it is, you're right. But yeah, like trying to finish that escalation on Colorado right now, like that map is super oppressive with the number of the number of suspicious guys with guns walking That's around all it is. like it's really hard to get some dirt done with that many surrounding uh, guards and stuff yeah the best ones are the ones where there are a ton of civilians in yeah. different outfits yes. and disguises yes. and totally. waiters and totally. guards Col- and stuff gardeners Col- Colorado is nothing but like military fantasy yeah like it's nothing but but militia guys yeah like I think 
I think Paris, maybe. Paris better than Sapienza? I like Sapienza because it's got the whole like town and the beach area right. and the caves. Like, There's just so much going Definitely. on. Definitely. Gary Busey, th- was that Sapienza? That's yes. Sapienza. Okay. Yes. You can get a cannon and shoot a plane down. Sapienza's <laughs> really good. Uh, that's, that's I think that's tough. my favorite. I go Sapienza, then Paris, then Hokkaido. Although, man, Hokkaido is really good. Yeah. Oh, you weren't there on Hokkaido. Friday when I was trying to do an escalation on Hokkaido. Oh, no. In Japan. Go. It's we really found, tough. We found the DDR yeah. machine. It's oh, tough. you found it? find the DDR machine. That's that's pretty good. Is that tied to a kill or is that just a little fun thing? It seemed like it. there might be a way to kill <laughs> with the DDR machine. Your final kill in Hokkaido on our video. Oh, my God. That was great. Really, I don't want to spoil it. People, really but... be, be perfect. Oh, that's a good send off. Yeah. Perfect cap to nearly a year of Hitman. <laughs> what a nice surprise. God, it really is. Uh, all right, that's it for emails. Bombcast at giantbomb.com is the email address. Let's, let's stop this podcast. What do you say? Yeah, cool. You got your shirt. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, I got this shirt. People, people listening to this podcast can't see that. It's the bad shirt from Jackbox. We continue to break the podcast rules, but yes. some some I saw some people saying that they got theirs. I got mine as well. Yeah. It's nice quality. I'm pretty it, picky yeah, about it. Is it, is it the quality it of the shirt seems all right yeah. for, for a twenty dollar t shirt. Yeah, it's a little bit thinner. Like I I was expecting like a super thick, like gildan, like yeah. just fucking nasty thing, but no Low quality. That's, like that's, relatively soft. It yeah. feels feels all right. Printing, I, printing quality seemed pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it looks like it. Mm. I drew that on my phone with my finger, and now it's on Jeff's Oh, you drew your your picture? Yeah, yeah. And and I, I didn't do the caption. The caption's mine. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I came up with that all on my own. I invented this phrase. It's really, so. it's not a bad Homer Simpson for drawing with your, with finger, your finger on a, on a tiny on a thing. Phone. Yeah. The matching was all me. Yeah, that's nice. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it was a collaborative. He designed the shirt. Yeah. The team effort. <laughs> uh, I'm glad you got that thing. I thought that might serve as a litmus test of how yeah. exactly how infringing they were willing to get with uh-huh. their content. Well, now, Jeff, if you're at the grocery store and just the cashier is like, "Oh, what's that? What's your shirt? What's your answer?" Because that's gonna happen if you wear that shirt regularly. I say, what does it look like? His response. You just say, "Back off, man!" Yes, I'm a scientist. That's, that's the response. Yeah. Okay. I got. I'd say I got it online. Okay. Like, pe- people ask me a lot about, like, "Where did you get this shirt?" I'm like, "I don't even remember." I was like, "I have the internet." So that's yeah, it's it's true. good. Answer. It's a good broad. Your open Xbox. Open ended answer. Yeah. Um, I keep I keep thinking about ordering that butt help. <laughs> that's shirt. a really good one too. Somebody somebody tweeted me a picture of yeah. one that they yeah, bought. So it, it looks pretty <laughs> good. Mm-hmm. It's very tempting. Do you get to pick the color of the shirt? No. Uh, <laughs> Oh uh, well, it's whatever the person chose. Yeah, whatever oh yeah, because you chose. pick it. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. interesting. Oh, okay. We do that more. A lot, of, a lot of gray ones. We should play um, some more of that thing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a stylus on my phone. Oh man. Oh, <laughs> no, that's an unfair advantage. I just can't draw though. That, <laughs> that might make the pictures a little too high quality. Yeah, actually. that's true. It's yeah. not like it was very hard to do it with a uh, on a on an actual like Rory was playing on his laptop mm. and he said with a, like a, his trackpad it was real terrible. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a completely different kind of terrible. Or I think actually he had a mouse. He had a mouse USB okay. to that thing. So maybe. Yeah. So yeah. how long do they store these? Like, <laughs> could you go back and I think I imagine forever? it's like print on demand, right? So yeah, if you have the yeah. URL to get to the shirt, oh, you could probably yeah, just sure. do it. So yeah, I, I loaded that page back up. It's huh. just a it's just a simple URL. I went back to that page days later, and it was still there. Yeah. God damn it, they nailed. I mean, that. it's not that much mm-hmm. data, right? It's just yeah. like, Here's yeah. this. I suppose. Here's this. Wow. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Super cool. Uh huh. All right. Uh, well, that's it. We're going to get out of here. That's going to do it for this week's edition of the Giant Bombcast. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week.